ay yo pan tutunguhan Mga tayo inaasam, di mapipigil ni naman Maaabot lahat, lahat ng iyong inaasam Kasi bagay ng sagot, sa lahat ka man sa kayamanan Buksay ng pahina, ng mga aklat ng karunungan Edukasyon, ating kailangan ka mamangan, ating iwanan Lalo pang mapaigting ang seguridad ng bawat isa, lalo na ang mga guro, sila'y nagpabakuna bilang mga huwaran sa paghatid di lamang sa karunungan, pati na rin sa kaligtasan.
to access the ability for continuous withstand adversity in these trying times. The school's division of Isabella City managed to deliver quality education to every learner. There were schools proposed to join the pilot implementation for the opening of classes for the school year. Considering the alert level status and due to the increase of COVID cases in the city, the local IATF denied the request of the division to participate in the pilot testing due to the number of unvaccinated learners. Rest assured, with the preparations made, Isabella City Division is ready for the face-to-face -face implementation and will continue to produce, reproduce, quality learning resources and strategies to give quality education and an education for all. Hello. Magadang araw Pilipinas, magadang araw DepEd. Ako po si Rodolph John T. Rodriguez, Education Program Supervisor ng DepEd Region 9 at narito po tayo para sa ating Edo Aksyon, Aksyon at Solusyon para sa Edukasyon. DepEd Virtual Press Conference upang mapag-usapan ang mahalagang balita at impormasyon tungkol sa sektor ng edukasyon. Panibagong taon na naman at mahigit limang buwan na rin simula ng ating buksan ang school year 2021-2022. At ngayon ay ating aalamin ang latest news and developments sa ating school year, partikular ngayong linggo dito sa DepEd Region 9. Magandang araw po. Ako naman si Iris Faye D. Seniza. Project Development Officer 2 ng DepEd Region 9. At binabati ko po ang lahat ng nakasubaybay sa ating DepEd Region 9 Facebook pages, lalo na sa ating mga learners, parents and teachers mula Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao. Kasabay nga ng pagbibigay ng latest development sa ating stakeholders and media friends tungkol sa implementasyon ng Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan o BELCP ngayong school year, makakasama rin natin ang ina ng ating kagawaran, Kalihim Leonor Magtolis Briones. Sasamahan din tayo ng ating mga undersecretaries, assistant secretaries, at Central Office Division Chiefs, Undersecretary Annaline Sevilla, Assistant Secretary Malcolm Garma, and Doctora Corazon Dumlao. And from Region 9, kasama po natin si Regional Director Dr. Ruth L. Fuentes, Assistant Regional Director 
Dr. Pedro Melchor M. Natividad, our Regional Information Officer, Ms. Dalia A. Paragas, and also we are joined by the Schools Division Superintendents and Assistant Schools Division Superintendents from the eight Schools Division Offices in the region. Samahan niyo po kami ngayong araw upang alamin ang mga aksyon at himayin ang solusyon para sa ating sektor. Ito ang Edo Aksyon. Aksyon at solusyon para, para sa edukasyon. Palagi nga nating nababanggit at ipinaaalala na education is a shared responsibility. At dahil sa ating shared responsibility at pagbabayanihan, pati na rin sa tulong ng iba't ibang sektor ng pamahalaan, na ipagpatuloy ng DepEd ang edukasyon ng bawat kabataang Pilipino sa gitna ng pandemya. Setyembre ng nakaraang taon ay opisyal ng binuksan ang school year 2021-2022. Ito ang pangalawang taon ng ating mga mag-aaral sa ilalim ng distance learning. Isang buwan matapos nating buksan ang klase ay sinimulan ng DepEd ang pilot implementation ng face-to-face -face classes. Ngayong buwan naman ng Pebrero, karagdagang paaralan na ang napabilang sa expansion ng ating face-to-face -face classes. At sa panibagong taong panuroan, alamin natin ang mga naging hakbang ng kagawaran at ang estado ng edukasyon dito sa DepEd Region 9. Panuorin natin ang video na ito. COVID ka lang, DepEd kami. This is our mantra. DepEd Zamboanga Sibugay continue rising above the challenges posed by this pandemic. Regarded as the heart of education delivery, the Curriculum and Implementation Division has responded above expectations and has delivered education without shortchanging our learners. The following were achieved. Monitored 505 schools in terms of timely distribution of modules and school-based adjustments made. Strengthen research culture, specifically in reading. National champion, Reading Cup Secondary. Regional Top Notchers, Week 1 and 2 for the National Reading Month. The school's division always gives credit to people who made possible the attainment of all PAPs identified in the BELCP. These fellows are worth commending the outstanding contribution manifested in their outstanding performance. Work hand in hand in complete synergy to attain the kind of services it has laid down in its BELCP.
In its bid to foster the value of education in this pandemic period, the school's division of Isabella City highlights few of the best practices that were indispensable in bringing out quality education. Project RIDE – Regenerating Inclusive Education and Employment in partnership with NGO Isabella, Isabella Foundation Incorporated. Project on Youth Work and Continuity Education Readiness Training Program in partnership with Nandalaa Foundation Incorporated, Division Orientation and Vaccination of Employees. Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan is our collective and proactive response to the unprecedented changes in the education landscape brought by the pandemic. The education and accessibility can and must continue, but only under the conditions and health protocol set by the Department of Health and the Interagency Task Force. C in Kite is teacher upskilling and reskilling. In this time of new normal, our teachers should not be left behind so as to keep track in the teaching learning process using the chosen learning modalities based on the learner enrollment survey form results. Various capacity building activities have been extended to them both online and offline. From the learning delivery modality courses 1 and 2 provided by the central office to equip both the LDM coaches and technical assistance providers as well as our teachers in the field. In order to prepare the teachers with the various learning modalities, CIE webinar series was done as well as workshops on script writing, video editing, layouting, and TV production. Subject matter experts were tapped to equip our teacher talents to the craft. The Polk City National High School, Galas National High School, and Minaug Elementary School successfully conducted their respective parents' orientation on the distance learning delivery modalities, the responsibilities of the parents in the distribution and retrieval of self-learning materials, and the importance of following health protocols. Flop. Let's take it from Halford E. Lukak. No one can whistle a symphony, it takes a whole orchestra to play it.
ligtas at maayos na implementasyon ng DELCP at ng face-to-face -face classes dito sa Rio Nueve ay bunga ng pagbabayanihan para sa edukasyon ng bawat sektor. Tuloy-tuloy ang edukasyon ng bawat kabataang Pilipino dahil sa pagkakaisa at sa hindi matatawarang dedikasyon ng ating mga education frontliners, mga learners na patuloy binubuo ang kanilang mga pangarap, mga magulang na tunay nagpapatibay sa pundasyon ng kanilang mga pangarap, at ang iba pang education advocates na katuwang natin para sa katuparan ng ating mga hakbangin. Sa pagkakataong ito, pakinggan naman natin ang mensahe ng ating regional director, Dr. Ruth L. Fuentes. Magandang araw po, R.D. Ruth. Morning. Thank you very much. Uh, a blessed day to all of us, uh, to our uh, uh, Secretary, Professor uh, Yonor Magtolis Briones, uh, Yusak An, uh, Asik Malcolm, fellow educators, uh, again, uh, good morning. Uh, indeed, Zamboanga Peninsula is privileged to, um, to be hosting this uh, virtual press conference, no? Uh, we acknowledge that um, education and information goes hand in hand. No? Um, we know for a fact that, um, and we owe it to our learners and to our public that we, we provide accurate and relevant um, information in order to ensure that, um, uh, uh, to sustain um, social consciousness amidst uh, all this, amidst the pandemic. And um, information technology, technology for that matters allows us to connect uh, taking into account uh, well of course the proper uh, platform the proper venue uh, the right timing and the right purpose so um, we are fortunate and we are privileged that amidst the difficult times that we are going through somehow uh, informational information uh, technology somehow um, uh, makes things easy for us, no? given the proper context, which I mentioned earlier. As we reopen our schools uh, with Zamboanga Peninsula having the highest number of schools with um, almost 65% of the total number of 2,500 schools, uh, school uh, SAT compliant, that means um, uh, next week we will be opening less than 1,000 schools face-to-face. Uh, -face. We have so much, so many things to look forward to as the decline of uh, the number of persons uh, are uh, continuously uh, dropping and uh, as the number of uh, persons uh, uh, with vaccination increasing, we are seeing uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, we are proud, and I can say as an educator, being part of the Department of Education, we never stop. We, we continue to provide uh, quality and relevant education amidst the difficult times. So, uh, sana ipagmalaki natin, naging kabahagi tayo. Hindi natin itinigil ang pagbibigay ng kalidad na edukasyon sa hamon ng pandemya. We are standing still and we are victoriously fighting, we're victoriously um, winning the battle against the, the virus. Mabuhay ang edukasyon, mabuhay ang uh, kagawaran, mabuhay tayong lahat. Um, in behalf of more than 1 million learners in the whole of Zamboanga Peninsula, again, uh, we welcome you. Good morning. Um, truly, this is the day that the God has made. Maraming maraming salamat and um, I hope everyone would tune in up to the very last part of this engagement because uh, for us, this is an opportunity and a privilege. We welcome you all. God bless everyone. Ayan, napakinggan po natin ang ating muy bonita, napakagandang regional director. Muli, muchisimas gracias, daghang salamat, R.D. Ruth, sa iyong mainit na pagbati at sa mga latest updates sa estado ng edukasyon sa ating rehiyon. Ang pagkakaroon natin ng isang ligtas na pagbabalik eskwela sa gitna ng pandemya at ang tuloy-tuloy na pagkatuto ng ating mga mag-aaral ay bunga ng pagtutulungan at masusing pagpaplano ng kagawaran ng edukasyon mula sa sentral hanggang sa ating mga field offices. 
maliban sa mga regional updates na ating nakita at napakinggan, ngayong araw rin ay ating malalaman ang ilang updates mula sa ating central office. Makakasama natin ang ating mahal na kalihim at ang ating mga pangalawang kalihim upang bigyan tayo ng impormasyon tungkol sa mga panibagong development sa sektor ng edukasyon. At ngayon, para bigyan tayo ng financial updates sa iba't ibang serbiso at programa ng kagawaran na may mahalagang papel sa pagpapatuloy ng edukasyon ngayong pandemya, tawagin natin si DepEd Undersecretary for Finance, Undersecretary Annalyn Sevilla. Good morning po, Yusek Ann. Magandang umaga sa Buwanga region. I hope I am clear and loud and clear na narinig ninyo. Ako po ngayon ay uh, sasama sa inyo para po magbigay ng financial updates. At syempre po maraming salamat RD Ruth and ARD Pedro at sa ating uh, eight or walong SDOs or school division offices in the Sambuanga regions. Unahin po natin, I have four updates uh, related to finance. Ito po ay tungkol sa Provident Fund, sa mga pondong ating pong uh, ipoprovide para sa mga learning resources, tungkol po sa price cap ng ating mga COVID test kits, at panghuli yung pong mga procurement process natin, especially during the election bond period. So ito po una ang ating Provident Fund. So Department Order Number no. 3, Series of 2022, was released as an amendment to our existing uh, Department Order on Provident Fund. Good news po kasi ang ating Provident Fund ay pwede na pong magbigay ng additional loans on top of the multi-purpose loan na 100,000. You can now add an, an, a new loan or additional loan for extreme cases na 200,000. So it's an available 300,000 loanable amount. But syempre ito po ay uh, depende sa inyong net take-home pay. So we have to remember that nasa batas po natin yan na kailangan may mauuwi kayong 5,000 no, kada buwan para po uh, magkaroon kayo ng availment of the uh, at least uh, or the maximum 300,000 loanable amount. So again, is an increase of 100,000 for our provident fund. Ito po mga empleyado natin sa Department of Education. Another provision of the new Department Order Number 3 is that hahabaan po natin yung payment period. It should be a flat rate of 6,000 per annum. Sa Provident Fund po natin yan, yan ang pinakamababa ngayon na uh, loan interest na po pwedeng ma-offer even lower than po sa ating mga nakikita o nakukuha sa ibang mga lending institution. At uh, instead of the three years payable term, nagiging five years na po ito. So we can pay until five years if we are availing of our Provident Fund uh, na meron po tayo sa ating division office, regional office, and of course at the central office. Pangatlong update about Provident Fund is that yung mga nag approve ng inyong mga loans, we found out that in the process, talagang matagal ang, ang pag-approve nito dahil pupunta pa sa regional office. At kailangan po na mag-convene ang Regional Provident Fund Board para ma-discuss, ma-evaluate at ma-approve ang mga loans na meron po tayo na nag apply So right now, at the central office, ito po ay approved at my level. At the regional office, it should be approved at the regional director level. And at the school division office, hindi nyo na po kailangang iakyat yan sa Regional Provident Fund Board. We are now authorizing the school division superintendents to approve the Provident uh, Fund Loan. Okay, so yan po, BO number 3, Series of 2022. Let's go to the second financial update. We would like to inform, especially po yung mga kapamilya natin sa Department of Education, ang mga available na pondo para sa ating learning resources. It can be self-learning modules. It can be platforms for our online or distance learning and all other needs na related sa ating learning continuity plan. We already have a direct release. Ibig sabihin, wala na pong kailangan kayong intayin sa central office na sub-araw. Ito po ay diretsyo na na naibigay sa inyo from DBM to the regional offices, a total of 4.08 billion. It was uh, released last January. 
And then we had additional release of 299 million. This is to replace all the uh, typhoon damage SLMs. Marami po tayo mga regions na na-include dito. Yung pong nangyaring typhoon Odette ay uh, nagkaroon tayo ng validation, inspection. And the Bureau of Learning Resources through the Office of USEC Dad San Antonio have uh, requested for the release of a total of 299 million. So sana po maayos na natin at mapalitan yung mga SLM po natin na na-damage because of the typhoon or that. And then another release is a total of 679 million. And this is an additional fund for quarter four of our SLMs for this school year, school year 21-22. So a total of available and already downloaded at the level of the division office and the regional officer. More or less five billion. Now for our next school year, we are already preparing for it. Para po hindi tayo delayed. We we will download a total of eight point nine billion for the quarters one, two, and three. Three quarters na po yung ating prepare para sa school year twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three. So a total of all in all a total of thirteen. 0.9 billion or 14 billion is available for our learning resources. Now we are in the uh, third update, and this is about uh, well, we have pala after this uh, provision of the total uh, available fund for our learning resources is a list of all our guidelines related to our learning resources fund. So ito po ay reminder. At um, atin pong binibigay sa ating mga kasama, ng mga taga DepEd, para po ma-remind kayo na ito po yung mga guidelines na dapat susundin natin when you use your uh, um, dead funds or any funds available to you. Now, we go to the third update. You can still see the slides, no? I'm having lang internet uh, problem here due to low signal. But I hope you have the next slide. This is about the price cap of rapid antigen testing and RT-PCR testing na kailangan po na masunod whenever we procure our uh, antigen testing. Ito po ay issuance of the Department of Health. And uh, when they issued this, we were given the price cap of 350 pesos for the self-administered rapid antigen testing and 660 pesos for the rapid antigen testing inclusive of our testing services. This is already effective uh, starting February 20, 2022. And we are giving this advice para po ay uh, guided po kayo sa inyong pag-procure or pagkuha ng mga antigen testing. Kasi po ginagamit natin yung ating MOE or maintenance and other operating expenses when we buy for uh, the rapid antigen testing for our employees. Next is the uh, price cap for the RT-PCR. Again, we are using the Department of Health Circular uh, number 2021-0374. It is effective starting September 6, last year, 2021. And this is the amount of the uh, allowable COVID-19 RT-PCR testing. Iba po yung public or private na nakukuha na natin. And really, this is um, allowable or uh, included in our authorized expenses, especially po kung uh, work-related. No? Yung ating po, ito po yung mga contact tracing and people who are reporting in the office at meron po talagang symptoms sa kailangan po magkaroon ng RT-PCR testing. So those are the reminders on the price cap. No? Lagi po natin tatandaan when we do the procurement and when we do our financial transactions, ay meron pong na-issue ang ating Department of Health on this uh, price uh, cap. Okay, last on the financial updates is about procurement activities. And we all know that election ban will start March 25 until May 8. At marami po ang nagtatanong sa atin Ano ang epekto nito sa ating procurement uh, dito sa Department of Education? Let us all be guided by the GPPB issuance. This is circular number 03-2021 dated December 2, 2021. And the uh, provision 4.1, 
ng sinabi kong GPPB resolution ay nagsasabi na all procuring entities, tayo po yon DepEd, are allowed to proceed with the commencement and completion of procurement activities during the election period. So yung pong mga ginagawa nating SLM, yung mga binibili natin ng mga laptops, computers, yung mga preparation for the school feeding program, everything that we need, supplies, na meron pong procurement, ay hindi po bawal. Pwede po yan until awarding of contract, even there is an election ban period. However, and so this is the yellow part, pakitingnan lang po. However, during the election ban, March 25 to May 8, ang hindi po po pwedeng gawin ay mag-issue ng notice of award para sa ating mga new construction, repair, gabaldon, electrification, and health facilities program because these programs are classified as public works. And we are also allowed to uh, request exemption from COMELEC and the program teams in charge of this are already working on the request for the exemption. But until or unless we get the exemption, ang aking pong reminder at advice sa inyo ay sana magkaroon ng successful procurement before the March 25 uh, election ban period for all our public works related na mga programs. All other programs na hindi po public works, wala pong kayong aalalahanin kasi tuloy-tuloy po ang ating procurement work from commencement until the awarding of contracts. So I hope that is um, clear and uh, I hope that uh, yung pong ating implementation ng ating mga programa ay magtuloy-tuloy dahil uh, ito po ay naging uh, practice na ng Department of Education, maging resilient, maging flexible, even during the pandemic. And I do thank everyone, especially po ang ating mga kasama sa Sambuanga region na talagang nagtatrabaho para po mabigyan ng servisyo at ma-deliver ang ating mga programa sa ating mga mag-aaral, sa ating mga guro, lalo na po sa ating komunidad dyan. Ingat po kayo palagi at maraming maraming salamat. Maraming salamat po, Yusek Analin Sevilla sa inyong makabuluhang report. Sir John, napaka-importante nga na meron tayong Provident Fund sa gitna ng pandemya. No? May for learning resources na budget, meron din for COVID kits. So, Tama ka dyan, Ma'am Iris. Yes. No? Nung sinabi ni Yusek Ann na pinababa lalo yung interest Correct. at pinabilis yung approval ng ating provident application mm -hmm. so maraming salamat you uh, you sec an sa iyong update yes at ngayon naman upang bigyan tayo ng update sa kasalukuyang expansion ng face to face classes narito si DepEd Assistant Secretary for National Academy of Sports and Field Operation Asec Malcolm Garma Okay, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Uh, okay ba yung audio ko? Naririnig? Okay, thank you. Uh, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Magandang umaga po, uh, Secretary, at uh, sa lahat po ng taga-subaybay nitong ating uh, halos linguhan no, na press conference upang uh, tayo po ay makapaghatid ng mga update uh, and information Uh, sa lahat po ng ating mga stakeholders, no? uh, lalong-lalo na po yung ating mga media partners. So, gaya po ng uh, huli nating naiulat dito sa ating uh, press conference, uh, nagsimula na po yung ating uh, implementasyon ng ating expanded phase of the limited face-to-face. -face. Uh, well, we, we based on what we have recommended to the Office of the President and what was approved by the President, And uh, all of these were, were the result of the successful implementation of our pilot implementation of the limited face-to-face. -face. So ngayon pong umagang ito, uh, gusto ko pong ibahagi sa inyo uh, ilan lang pong itong uh, numero po. No? Uh, at uh, siguro mamaya after, during the, the uh, question and answer portion, ay maaaring masagot pa ho namin lalo yung mga katanungan nyo tungkol sa expanded face-to-face. So, 
Ito pong uh, expanded face-to-face na ginagawa natin ay tinatawag po nating progressive expansion. No? Ibig po sabihin nito ay tuloy-tuloy po na ating uh, uh, ini-evaluate no? yung ating mga skwelahan with regards to their readiness uh, using our SSAT tool, no? yung ating pong school safety assessment tool. So sa ngayon po, next slide please. Uh, ayon po sa aming tala, ay uh, meron na ho tayong uh, humigit kumulang 6145 schools that are qualified or, or or ready no to implement the face to face classes uh, based on the school safety assessment tool so yan po yung breakdown uh, per region kung ilan na pong paaralan at uh, gaya po ng nabanggit ko ito po ay maaring uh, ay ito po ay madadagdagan pa definitely madadagdagan pa ho ito as we progress with our implementation. Next slide, please. At uh, tulad po nung aming binigyang diin nung nakaraang uh, press con natin, uh, ang, ang mga paralan po that uh, have already qualified no, based on our SSAT can already implement the limited face-to-face -face as long as the, uh, the schools are under uh, are in areas under alert at level 1 and 2. So, so far, ito po yung mga nakuha nating uh, numero batay po sa report ng ating mga regional director. So, for region 1, meron na pong uh, 74 na paralan na nag, uh, nag uh, sasagawa na ng kanilang limited face-to-face -face ngayon. As of kahapon, no, February 21, uh, region 2, uh, 80, region 3, 513, 4A, uh, 27, uh, Pero ito po yung ito po yung nagumpisa na as of kahapon pero marami po dito sa mga paaralan na ito that already qualified for the limited face to face ay magsisimula po by next week no uh, yung po yung uh, nakuha nating ulat mula po sa ating mga regional director Okay so 4B 25 13 uh, region region 6 34 region 7 59 next slide please uh, region 8, 399. For Region 9, 20. Region 10, 208. Region 11, 29. Region 12, 106. Uh, hindi po tayo nakakuha pa ng datos mula sa Region 13 or Karaga uh, sapagkat alam natin na uh, ang Karaga po ay karamihan sa mga lugar nito ay apektado o naapektuhan ng bagyong ulit. So, hinihingi pa po namin yung datos galing sa Karaga. Sa NCR po ay 31 at sa car naman po ay 266 so for for a total of 1876 schools that have already or are already starting no uh, the implementation of the limited face to face but then again i would like to reiterate that uh, in the coming days in the coming weeks more schools will be implementing the limited face to face so long as they are under alert level 1 and so, so far, yun lang po muna ang may babahagi ko sa inyo at uh, uh, amin na lang pong tutukunan yung mga katanungan ng ating po mga kaibigan mula sa video. Thank you. Maraming salamat po sa inyong report, Aztec Malcolm Hingil, sa mga updates on the expansion of face-to-face -face classes. Isang magandang balita po sa ating lahat ang pagbubukas ng pilot implementation sa iba pang mga grade levels. At sana nga po ay mas marami pang mga paaralan natin ang pwede nang makapagsagawa ng limited face-to-face -face classes sa taong ito. Ngunit patuloy po ang ating paalaala sa lahat na sundin ang mga health protocols para masiguro naman natin na ligtas tayong lahat. Kasama rin po natin ngayong umaga si DepEd School Health Division Chief, Dr. Corazon Dumlao, para naman sa isinasagawang pediatric vaccination ng ating mga learners. Dr. Dumlao, over to you. Good morning po, um, Secretary, and uh, sa ating mga undersecretaries na nandito po, uh, regional directors. I will be presenting updates on pediatric vaccination. Let me share my slide. Here are the data for 
that the outbreak of vaccination, which we secured from the national 99% of the members of the target pediatric population age 12 to 17, have already been vaccinated with at least first dose, while 65.11% are already fully vaccinated. For the pediatric population age 5 to 11, we are clearly only starting. Let's start for Thailand, uh, Feb 7, with only 2.81% of the members of the set population having received their first dose. Since the rollout of the pediatric vaccination for ages 12 to 17, the Department of Education already issued BTFC memo number 557, which provided guidance to the field on how that can provide strong support for the group. The same guidance is reiterated for the vaccination of children age, ages 5 to 11 through DTFC memo number 606, which has been approved by the Secretary. The DTFC memo issued to support the OH sequences. For instance, CTFC memory number 606 is anchored uh, on DOH memorandum 20. Ayun, medyo nagka-problema tayo sa internet connection mula kay Doktora Dumlao. Anyway, ang nakuha natin ay isinasagawa natin ang ating pediatric vaccination. Nagpapasalamat tayo sa mga magulang ng ating mga kabataan na pumayag na mabakunahan ang ating mga learners para sa pagbabalik ng ating, ng ating mga kabataan sa paaralan. Maraming salamat po, Doktora Dumlao, sa inyong latest reports at updates uko sa isinasagawang pediatric vaccination. Okay? I think uh, okay na siguro yung signal. Ayan. So on institutional arrangements, institutional uh, on institutional arrangements is uh, it shall be established and existing one strengthened and expanded to cover pediatric vaccination as proposed as vaccination sites and the voluntary participation of personnel in vaccination teams. Second is on the use of schools. Existing processes and requirements for the use of schools as vaccination sites shall be loosened up to ensure that uh, more schools qualified to serve as vaccination sites can be accommodated. Existing arrangements of the use of schools as uh, vaccination sites shall be maximized. However, for the specific purpose of participating in pediatric vaccination, requests shall be approved by the school's division superintendent instead of the regional director. All other requirements as stipulated in DM28 series of 2022. One shall be retained. The DepEd shall uh, highly support pediatric vaccination and join all schools that are qualified to be used as vaccination sites to cooperate and coordinate with their respective LGUs regarding the said activity. On the voluntary participation of uh, health uh, personnel, Efforts shall be ramped up to enjoin more health and other personnel to volunteer for the vaccination of the pediatric population. All personnel who have volunteered have been volunteering in local vaccination activities um, are highly encouraged to volunteer again, continue volunteering for pediatric vaccination. The offices, officials, and personnel concerned are reminded to ensure that 
volunteering personnel are provided with the support enumerated in DM 28 series of 2021, item number 21, uh, page uh, 7 to 8. Now, on demand generation activities, DepEd shall actively support promotion activities related to pediatric vaccination in line with the back to school campaign. So we have already designated uh, back to school champions at the regional and division levels. And uh, these are our medical officers who take the lead in the vaccination campaign. There are also miscellaneous provisions. All learners who will be vaccinated during school days shall be considered excused from attending classes, provided that they present proof of uh, vaccination to their teachers. And personnel who are parents or guardians of deaf and learners who will accompany their children for pediatric vaccination during work days shall likewise not be considered absent from their work. And alternative working arrangements may be explored for personnel of schools that will be used as pediatric vaccination sites. Here are some photos by, uh, shared by our field health personnel on the ongoing pediatric vaccination. As earlier mentioned, our health personnel have been coordinating with the respective local government units for their participation in the program and for the mobilization of our learners. Our regional directors and schools division superintendents are taking the lead in uh, ensuring uh, coordination uh, with local government units and uh, advocating support to pediatric vaccination. I would like to take this opportunity to enjoin everyone to participate in and promote our information dissemination and demand generation activities. Here are some of the activities organized by our partners, which we strongly supported. Here are uh, many other similar activities that are ongoing, especially in the field, as also coordinated by our field health personnel. We hope you can join them as well. Together, let us help address the information needs of our parents so that they will have their kids vaccinated. Uh, again, I would like to thank our uh, uh, beloved secretary for uh, uh, taking the lead in championing not just vaccination, but the uh, school health and nutrition programs and projects under the offline kalusugan sa DEPED. Maraming salamat po. Ayan, muli maraming salamat Doktora Dumlao sa inyong updates sa isinasagawang pediatric vaccination na malaki ang papel sa muling pagbabalik eskwela ng ating mga learners. Nagpapasalamat din tayo sa ating mga undersecretaries, assistant secretaries, and central office division chiefs para sa mga pinakabagong ulat mula sa ating kagawaran. Sa puntong ito, atin munang panuorin ang maikling intermission number mula sa Milenga's Dance Ensemble from Pagadian City Division.
Wow, Sir John! Pang-international nga naman ang galing ng ating Melengas Dance Ensemble. Tama ka dyan, Ma'am Iris. At sa katunayan, naimbintahan na po sila na mag-perform sa labas ng bansa upang maipamalas ang galing at ganda ng sining at kultura ng Region 9. Alam mo ba, Ma'am Iris, kaya mo bang yung tinikling na may dalang ano, props? <laughs> Hindi ko talaga kaya yun, Sir John. Oh, yeah. That makes us very proud of you, Melengas Dance Ensemble. Maraming salamat sa isang napakagandang intermission number, Pagadian City Division. Bilang hudyat ng pagsisimula ng talakayan sa pagitan ng ating mga media partners at ni Secretary Liling kasama ang ating mga DepEd officials, Ating pakinggan ang mensahe ni Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones. Pero bago yan, panuorin muna natin ang video na to. Leonor Magtolis Briones, a passionate educator, an adventurous writer, a gender advocate, a faithful servant of God, a trusted public servant, and a loving mother. She had her education at Siliman University in 1958, obtaining a bachelor's degree in business administration, majoring in accounting, and obtained magna cum laude at the early age of 17. She obtained her master's degree in public administration from the University of the Philippines and postgraduate diploma in development administration from Leeds University in England. She was also conferred Doctor of Public Administration honoris causa by the Central Philippine University in 2014. Liling has also been an achiever as she was awarded with distinction from Leeds University, England, and obtained certificates in policy in public enterprise from Harvard Institute for International Development, Harvard University, and innovations in governance from the John F. Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University, Massachusetts. She also accepted the UB Presidency nomination in 2010 that was initiated by the National College of Public Administration and Governance students and was supported by more than 1,000 people coming from the faculty and alumni through signature campaigns. Later on, she ventured into public service as secretary to the Commission on Audit and served as the National Treasurer of the Philippines. She also pursued her life's advocacies, including fighting for social justice. As an established leader, she headed the Freedom from Debt Coalition. Briones was also a gender advocate who raised the level of discourse to address the plight of women. As a passionate advocate for social justice, she addressed the United Nations General Assembly in September 2005. In front of an international delegation, she bravely uttered to them, Fulfill your promises, as the poor cannot wait for too long. She also became a partialist nominee to the Congress under the banner of Kaakbay Party in 2012, which advocated for social reforms. She also served as a prominent petitioner of several non-government organizations and individuals which questioned the constitutionality of the Disbursement Acceleration Program of the previous administration. Secretary Liling has spent most of her life as an educator. Whenever or wherever she delivered a public lecture, she taught like a teacher in a classroom. She became a researcher and professor at the University of the Philippines for over 50 years and was later conferred as Professor Emeritus in 2013 for her outstanding achievement inside and outside the university. A natural lover of music, she is also a member of the Manila Concert Choir and is currently serving as its president. With her invaluable success and journey as a leader and educator, She embraced public service and accepted the challenge to become the secretary of the Department of Education of the Duterte administration. 
one of her greatest contributions to GetEd is the installation of reforms in the education system through the launch of Sulong Educalidad, the rallying call for national effort to innovate Philippine education. Recently, she launched two books that depicted her life as an accomplished public servant and author. The first one was her biography, Faith, Duty, and Country, written by her friend and confidant for nearly 55 years, Dr. Proserpina Chit Domingo Tapales, a former dean of NCPAG, on her journey from being a poor girl from the Kulungan Negros Oriental up to being a public servant and advocate of education for all. Her second book, Boiled Green Bananas, is a compilation of her columns published in the Business Mirror from 2006 to 2016. To quote her supporters, There is no shadow of doubt on Briones's probity and integrity. And until today, throughout her 80 years of experience, she shows how a true servant leader should be ethical, dignified, and responsible. Magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Uh, in the name of the DepEd family, I would like to personally and officially uh, greet uh, Region 9, uh, um, which I visited uh, a few years back, and but the memories are still uh, there. One of my most pleasant uh, visits a uh, regional visit. So uh, good morning, ARD Ruth Fuentes. Congratulations on your oath taking. And uh, mga SDSs, uh, lahat na uh, nasa uh, region natin uh, ngayong uh, umaga at nakikinig. Uh, I hope that uh, our teachers and our uh, other officials in the Deped family in the region are are listening and taking note of the reports that are being uh, shared with you on developments in the Department of Education. I noticed that uh, a lot of people write to me directly, expecting me to take uh, immediate and direct action on problems which uh, our, our regional offices are very uh, capable of uh, resolving or of uh, handling uh, because that's what regional offices are for and that's what regional directors are for, including our SDSs. So um, I would like to encourage uh, particularly our, our teachers and our parents to uh, monitor our uh, press conferences. Uh, I noticed that this is one of our uh, very successful innovations in the Department of Education where before we used to have press conferences at the national level, and these hardly reach the regions. This time we are doing our press conferences at a regional so level so that um, regional specific uh, issues can be uh, discussed in um, great uh, detail. And uh, I also brought along for force ito, uh, Required talaga uh, our battery of, uh, of undersecretaries and assistant secretaries. Um, we have Yusik Dads, San Antonio, who is in charge of curriculum. Kaya pwede ninyong matanong tungkol sa curriculum. Then you have uh, Yusik Alain, who is uh, very deeply involved in um, the uh, uh, building of infrastructure and um, furniture and all other concerns of, of our um, department. Then uh, a while ago, Yusik Ann um, shared with you uh, many good news. I noticed that uh, uh, also uh, maybe uh, our, our teachers and uh, members of the Deped family um, are not uh, completely um, attuned 
to all the efforts that the department has exerted to make uh, and to improve the financial situation of our, not only of our teachers, but also of our staff and um, the entire uh, department. We also have uh, USEC uh, REVC. REVC is, uh, is a pure uh, Bisaya, um, Molano, Bicolano, uh, ano, ang kanyang, uh, ang kanyang um, uh, uh, or origins and um, Yusik Revs is in charge of operations. So, um, nandito kami lahat para uh, sagutin ang tanong, hindi lamang sa press. Uh, and we're very uh, welcoming of the press, of course. Uh, even as we try to reach each and every one of our teachers, uh, the media uh, does it in very much faster uh, and an effective manner uh, because of the reach of, of media, both uh, formal and informal, uh, social as well as uh, mainstream uh, media. So you are welcome. And if there are any parents listening, teachers and staff, as well as learners who are listening, you are all welcome to raise your uh, questions about developments in the department. I will not uh, go into the details of the new things that are happening in the department. Uh, Malcolm has already covered uh, comprehensively um, the latest on on face to face. Yusik Ann has reported on the new and the good financial uh, initiatives that uh, we are. Uh, we are uh, starting, especially uh, Provident Fund. Uh, I think we have to accept the fact that we strengthened the Provident Fund during this administration, increased the level of available uh, financial uh, assistance, and kikita ninyo na we have much more funds now, which are available for to help uh, our, our teachers and uh, our staff. So I will not uh, give uh, a very lengthy uh, overview. Uh, see, uh, that's why I invited our uh, undersecretaries and assistant secretaries. So let's now go directly to the question and answer portion, which I am sure members of media uh, are eager to raise, as well as the teachers themselves. Uh, teachers are very, very active in social media. And this press conference is a good opportunity to share your, your, your concerns, your fears, your doubts, and um, other matters which actually have been addressed and are being addressed by the Department of Education so to give you comfort, to give you more information so that uh, we will have uh, increased um, confidence in what we are doing at this particular time. So um, may I ask the moderators and the hosts of this uh, press conference to, to proceed with the question and answer uh, period. Thank you. Imong mensahe, Secretary Liling. Okay, nabanggit nga kanina ni Secretary Liling ang apat pa na undersecretaries na kasama sa ating press con ngayon. We have Yusek Elaine Pasqua, Yusek Justado San Antonio, Yusek Salvador Malana III, and Yusek Revsi Escobedo. Ayan. Alam po namin marami pang magagandang mga balita ang inyong nais ipaabot sa ating mga mag-aaral, guru at stakeholders. Kaya hindi na po natin patatagalin ito Diretso na po tayo sa ating press con proper. Makakasan man natin si na Director Nina Bianca Sanglay at Miss Dalia Paragas na magsisilbing moderators ng ating press conference. Magandang araw, Director Nina at RIO Dalia Paragas. Assalamu alaikum po muli. Pugdaghang salamat sa ating mga host nga si John of Iris. 
Ngayon po ay ating sisimula ng ating talakayan. Inaanyayahan po natin ngayon ang ating media partners para sa isang virtual question and answer with our Secretary Lenore Magtolis Briones. Also, aside from our media partners na nakaantabay virtually, meron din po tayo mga media partners na on-site. Dito lang po nakalimited face-to-face -face din po sa atin sa DepEd Regional Office located at the Government Center, Balintawa, Pagarian City. Mamaya po ay isa-isahin natin silang tawagin upang makadaupang pala din sa pamamagitan ng pagtatanong sa ating butihing Secretary of the Department of Education, Leonor Magtolis Briones. Magandang hapon po, direct nina. Hi, good afternoon, Ma'am Dalia. Good noon po sa lahat ng ating mga tagapanood, sa ating mga teachers, sa ating mga mag-aaral, at sa lahat po nang nanonood sa atin live via DepEd Philippines Facebook page at sa official Facebook page na rin po ng DepEd Region 9. Maliban nga po kay Secretary, makakasama rin natin si na DepEd Undersecretary for Finance, Yusek Anilin Sevilla, Undersecretary for Administration, Yusek Elaine Del Pasqua, Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction, Yusek Justado San Antonio, Undersecretary for Field Operations, Yusek Revsi Escobedo, Assistant Secretary for Procurement, and dito po si ASEC Salvador Malana III, Assistant Secretary for National Academy of Sports and Field Operations, ASEC Malcolm Garma, Regional Director Ruth Fuentes, at School Health Division Chief, Dr. Maria Corazon de Blau. Ako, mukhang handa na tayo sa ating press con proper, pero bago po tayo magsimula, isang reminder lamang sa ating mga media friends na dalawang tanong lamang po ang pahihintulutan upang mabigyan ng pagkakataon ang lahat upang makapagtanong. Kaya, Ma'am Dalia, simulan na ba natin? Yes po. So we will now proceed with our question and answer. Again, we would like to request our media partners to turn on their microphone and camera when they ask their questions. Reminder po sa ating mga media partners, questions that are not related to our topic will be referred to the concerned office and we will send the answer via Viber. Back to you, Direct Nina. All right. So for the first question, unahin po natin tawagin ang representative from the City Information Office of Dipolog City. City Information Office ng Dipolog City. Kasama ba natin ang ating representative? Kung wala man, we can read the question. And the question is, what is the final stand of DepEd with regards to face-to-face -face classes amidst the ongoing pandemic? Uh, Director Nina, I will start off uh, with my own uh, answer and uh, the others, uh, uh, the undersecretaries and assistant secretaries can also give additional inputs. Uh, what is the final stand? The stand has always been the same. The policy of the department is what we call blended education. Na may mayroong uh, halo na uh, face to face, and yun ang sinasabing anong final stand. Na ibat ibang mga approaches at pinipili ito sang ayon sa pangangailangan ng isang eskulahan at sa kung ano ang advice halimbawa ng Department of Education, of Department of Health and uh, the Department of Interior and Local Governments at with the participation, of course, of our, our parents and uh, our, our staff. So uh, right from the beginning, we have always recognized the importance of face-to-face. -face. Yun ang tradisyon na nakasanayan natin. Uh, ang gusto ko lang bigyan ng din ay ang face-to-face -face na sinasabi natin ngayon ay iba sa face-to-face -face na dati nating nakasanayan na whole day nakaharap ang teachers sa pupils. Pero uh, there would be uh, online portions, kagaya ng ginagawa ng ibang mga bansa. There would be other uh, methods, uh, kagaya ng mga modules. There would be uh, alternative uh, learning uh, methodologies. Depende sa pangangailangan. Pero ang tawag niyang kabuuan ay yung sinasabi nating blended learning 
nakasama talaga ang face-to-face. -face. The extent of face-to-face -face depends on the assessment of the Department of Education, of uh, Department of Health, I'm sorry, uh, our own assessment, and also the permission that would be granted by the local governments as well as the written consent of the parents. So, hindi nagbabago. Nandiyan talaga palagi ang face-to-face Iba lang ang paraan, iba lang ang approach, at iba lang ang siguro ang scheduling na na-develop natin ngayon. Thank you. Kung may ibang dagdag ang ating mga uh, undersecretaries at assistant secretaries, kanina very extensive ang report ni uh, Asik Malcolm. Uh, thank you, Malcolm na uh, current na current na ano, naumpisa naman natin talaga ang face-to-face report na niya kung ilan ang schools are now into face-to-face -face, pero close ang monitoring dahil kung may pagbabago sa risk assessment then we will have to adjust. Thank you. Kung may gustong uh, dumagda, uh, dumagdag doon uh, resulta din itong very favorable actions ng uh, DepEd at sa Department of Health sa ating pilot implement, sa pag implement natin ng pilot studies. Kasi the only way to find out whether face-to-face uh, uh, -face will blend well with uh, the other methodologies of, of teaching is uh, to pilot it and... Um, 15,000 ka, no? that's a huge uh, sample of participants and how many schools and parents at saka not a single case of a COVID outbreak. So, uh, yun ang basya ng ating decision. And importante, the president has already, uh, in a sense, devolved to the Department of Education and the Department of Health the decision making authority to uh, to uh, to further uh, increase the number of schools in face to face as well as uh, progressively implement uh, the concepts of face to face in uh, relation to the other approaches to learning thank you thank you secretary may we recognize assistant secretary malcolm garma if he has anything to add sir okay thank you director nina and thank you ma'am Uh, siguro ano lang, karagdagan lang dun sa nabanggit na po ni Secretary, uh, uh, ito pong tinatawag nating progressive expansion no, ng limited face-to-face -face natin. Uh, uh, sa, sa para ho ito mas mapabilis at mapalawak pa natin lalo, uh, yung pong desisyon at uh, aksyon, no, katulad ng evaluation, assessment and everything, and the selection of the schools, are already uh, devolved to the regions, uh, Director yes. Nina, no? so that uh, mas mabilis. Hindi po tulad, uh, ma'am, nung pilot natin na talagang uh, tayo po ang sa central office ang talagang uh, uh, tumitingin dito. No? Pero ito pong progressive expansion natin ay pinaubaya po natin sa mga regions and divisions yung evaluation, assessment, and selection of schools that will be involved in the limited face-to-face. -face. And that includes also, Director Nina, yung monitoring no, uh, ng implementasyon. Again, ang pinakamahalaga lamang na batayan na dapat nating tignan is una, ito po mga skwelahan na ito ay sumailalim doon sa evaluation gamit yung ating school safety assessment tool. No? Pangalawa, na uh, ito pong uh, mga skwelahan na ito ay uh, lalahok sa ating limited face-to-face -face gamit o naka-angkla pa din sa tinatawag nating uh, 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 shared responsibility framework na kung saan mahalagang mahalaga dito yung pagpayag, consent ng uh, concurrence ng ating mga local government units at syempre ng ating mga magulang. At uh, pangatlo, na ito pong mga paralan na ito ay dapat nandun sa mga lugar na nasa ilalim ng alert level 1 and 2. So kunwari nagsimula na yung school natin ng limited face to face kasi alert level 1 and 2 sila at uh, suddenly nagkaroon ng uh, pagdami ng kaso ng COVID at uh, magkakaroon ng reclassification at ito'y magiging level 3. Uh, yan po yung magiging uh, hudyat para magkaroon tayo ng uh, suspension of classes. So it's not closure but suspension of classes dahil Uh, ito po ay uh, pinagbabawal din no, ng ating uh, IAT, patay sa ating IATF uh, resolutions 
na pagka alert level 3 ang isang lugar ay bawal ang face to face sa basic education. So, yan yan director Nina yung mga mahalagang punto na dapat nating uh, uh, maibahagi no sa ating mga kaibigan sa media at sa ating po mga stakeholders para mas lalo po maunawaan paano magkakaroon ng uh, o paano maiimplementa itong ating limited face to face. Salamat. Thank you director Nina. Thank you very much, Asik Malcolm, for the reiteration at mas malinaw yung paliwanag ni Asik Malcolm ano, sa mga um, even contingency plans ng DepEd. Ayan. Um, Ma'am Dalia, before we proceed with uh, sa susunod na magtatanong, uh, basahin ko yung question pa rin galing sa City Information Office ng Dipolog City. Ito yung pangalawang katanungan. And this okay. question, uh, we can have the secretary answer, supplemented by... Under Secretary um, Justado San Antonio naman. Yung tanong is, what are DepEd's plans and strategies in improving the implementation of distance learning aside from the utilization of class modules? Secretary. Uh, hindi, hindi lamang plans and strategies kasi we're already in the middle of the uh, academic uh, school uh, school year. So uh, we are already in the stage of Alibawa. Immediately after the pilot, uh, nagawa tayo ng assessment. Tinanong natin ang mga learners una, anong feel nila doon sa pag-pilot uh, natin itong face-to-face, -face, limited face-to-face. -face. Tinanong natin ang mga magulang. Tinanong natin ang teachers, ang local government. So... Uh, Iba't ibang grupo ang tinanong natin at yung sagot naman ay uh, favorable na favorable na gusto nilang ipagpatuloy, gusto nilang ipag-expand. Kaya yun din sa palagay ko, ang basihan kung bakit ang presidente pumayag talaga ng progressive uh, expansion. no So, uh, yung, yung plano na yan, nagawa na yan, we are already in the implementation uh, phase Kasi uh, natapos na yung pilot, uh, nag-progressive uh, expansion na tayo. Uh, tinanong na natin ang mga naka-experience nito, nagpa-identify na tayo ng mga possible problems at nag-respond na tayo nito. So we are moving already from plans and strategies which we did a few months before into actual operations. Uh, nandito si uh, Undersecretary Revs, uh, nandito si... Uh, Asik Malcolm at saka uh, hindi maka-join sa atin si ano si uh, Yusek Nepo pero pati ang presidente uh, ininform na natin lahat na nagtatanong kung ano ang strategy ay eh, bago tayo nag-opening in uh, in uh, September uh, may strategy na tayo may plano na tayo may resulta na tayo sa assessment natin at pinag-aralan na talaga natin ang gusto itong mga hakbang na ngayon ineoperationalize natin in uh, in uh, already uh, 1876 uh, schools naka-identify na tayo ng 6146 schools actually uh, very much earlier na ready pero Siyempre, pag, pag sabihin ng Department of Health na ang risk classification ay, ay level uh, 3, ay hindi natin tinutuloy. So now we have 1,876 at this time. So we're already uh, clearly implementing, nasa implementation sp uh, stage na tayo. Thank you. Unless may dagdag si, uh, si uh, uh, Yusek Dads. Or si ano Yusek uh, Revsi, kasi si Revsi is in operation sila ni dalawa ni Malcolm. Uh, Thank you, Secretary. If uh, we have Yusek Dats with us in this meeting, if you have any additional answers po sa question. Yusek Justado San Antonio, if... Remote running short of food. Kaya tayo mapanilinan ko ane. <laughs> Naunta naman ang short of Baka we can um, get back to you. Ah, sandali! Face off! Sa <laughs> sakit na pala? <laughs> iba, iba po yun. Ah. Ay, 
Yan, if we have Ma'am Dalia, siguro baka pwede nating balikan maya-maya si na Yusek Revsi and Yusek Dads. We can proceed with our next question. Okay po. Uh, bago po tayo magpatuloy, I just wanted to recognize uh, the Regional Federated PTA President, uh, the former Mayor of Dumiag Sambonga del Sur, uh, Sir Edgar Jamero. Kasi po yung sinagot kanina ni Secretary Liling uh, regarding the stand of DepEd on our face-to-face -face classes. Uh, sana po, sir, uh, nasagot ng, uh, nasatisfy po yung, yung uh, tanong nyo sa sagot ng ating secretary at ng ating uh, undersecretary uh -huh. po. Uh, kasi, Dalia, ang, ang ating uh, approach two years ago pa natin sinabi is blended. Yes. Uh, blended learning, no? Yes. At saka mayroon pa nga pending na legislation sa Congress uh, hinggil niya. Eh. Blended, mayroon talagang component ng face-to-face. -face. Hindi lang natin ma-implement yun because of the of the decision to lock down uh, the country at that particular time. Pero ngayon, better na ang conditions, yeah. eh, ini-implement natin. But with very, very careful uh, monitoring and also yung sinasabi nating concept of shared responsibility. So, uh, It has always been there. Yes. Ang face to face ano, yun ang linakihan natin karamihan sa atin but not in the same uh, with, not with the same content or the number of hours yung mga bansa na bilib na bilib tayo uh, tinatanong ko mismo yung mga estudyante doon eh ilang oras ba ilang araw ba kayo nagfi face to face may iba isang araw may iba kalahating araw yung iba may halo talagang online. Hindi natin ma-avoid ang online dahil ganyan ang direksyon ngayon. Napaka laki ng role ng teknolohiya ngayon sa buhay natin. So hindi pwede na ang ating mga anak, ang ating learners ay nasanay lang sa face-to-face. -face. Paglabas nila sa mundo, kung hindi sila trained sa online, uh, medyo uh, they will have Uh, adjustments to to make pag sa kanilang trabaho hindi nila masasabi ay absent ako noon uh, hindi yan tinuro sa amin so sabay-sabay ang mga aspeto ng uh, tinatawag nating blended learning thank you salamat po secretary Liling sa karangdagang sagot ngayon po ay dadako naman tayo sa Isabela Basilan At tatawagin naman natin si Sir Ronald Paragas, naku, kapilido ko, ng 97.5 Radio Comunidad de Sibela, Basilan. Sir, ¿qué tal, Sir Ronald? Sir Ronald? Ito yung challenge ng ating internet sa Isabela Basilan po. Kasi kanina nakita ko siya, nandiyan na po siya sa ating platform. Mm -hmm. Isabela okay. is very beautiful. Uh, yes, and of course, uh, <laughs> it has a uh, role in our, our, our history and our recent history, uh, particularly in Mindanao. Uh, so... Uh, Maraming uh, istorya dyan na inspiring. Mayroon ding uh, uh, magandang memories which we should not uh, get. Okay, sige po. Uh, babasahin ko na lang po ang kanyang tanong. I hope he could get back. Sige. Based on the given president's approval of the recommendation for the progressive expansion of face-to-face -face classes, and also authorizing all regional directors to commence the progressive expansion phase of face-to-face -face both public and secondary schools since Isabela City, Basilan, will already be under level 2 category. Is it possible to have and implement our limited face-to-face -face classes since pilot testing was not administered in our division yet due to cancellation of the local IATF? Uh, may I refer this? Uh, question to R.D. Ruth. Ma'am, would you like to answer? Uh, magandang tanghali po. Uh, good noon again, uh, Ma'am Liling, uh, sa lahat. No? Uh, um, kung titingnan natin yung uh, kasaysayan nung, um, na last 
yung pilot during the pilot stage actually may mga uh, schools talaga sa Isabela City na talagang pinaghandaan itong uh, pagbubukas but katulad nga ng sinabi ni Asik Malcolm kangina uh, hindi lang naman na paghahanda o oh, yung uh, uh, preparation ng school ang kinokonsidera natin sa pagbubukas ng 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 face to face no kailangan um, uh, mataas yung vaccination rate um, I'm happy to note that um, isa yung Isabela na sa pinakamataas ang vaccination rate natin sa mga um, sa mga guro no we have um, Oh, actually, sa sa learners nga, um, 25% na yung vaccination rate nila at sa teachers ay um, more than 90% na. No? But then, um, during the time kasi nung November, uh, kaya hindi sila nakaparticipate, uh, hindi nag-concur yung local government kasi um, mababa pa the time. Now that um, maganda na yung kanilang... Uh, Uh, vaccination rate at ang classification din ang ng quarantine classification alert level 2 so nagkaroon sila kahit hindi sila naka participate doon sa pilot study uh, yung mahabang yung matagal at mabusisi at masusing paghahanda ay naisagawa na nila at uh, gusto kong bigyan ng um, uh, pagpupugay at commendation yung mga involved diyan uh, yung mga school heads uh, superintendent lahat ng mga tao naging bahagi ng preparation kumbaga kasi there's ano eh um, Ilang, hindi lang kasi buwan to eh, matagal nang pinag-uusapan itong paghahanda ng mga paaralan. Ano? So hindi man natin masabi na 100% na wala, wala talagang ma-infect o magkakaroon ng, um, ng, ng transmission dyan. But in terms of preparation at kung paano, ma- how do we mitigate um, uh, some uh, issues that may occur in the implementation of limited face-to-face, uh, sasabihin ko, I can assure... Um, lahat po ng mga magulang na handa po ang DepEd, ang mga paaralan sa Isabela sa uh, pagbubukas ng paaralan. Uh, actually, 51 sa, sa, sa datos natin, 51 yung school na ready-ready na. Pero lima pa lang yung magbubukas. As of as today dito, ha, magbubukas sa, sa next, sa, sa susunod na linggo. So yes. malaki. Malaking bagay yung uh, nakatulong yung pagtaas ng vaccination rate. Uh, salamat din sa media kasi yung advokasya ng DepEd at ng Department of Health ay uh, naging bahagi kayo dito kasi talagang drastic po yung uh, increase ng vaccination rate natin sa mga teaching and non-teaching. Kasi if I compare kasi last nung, nung September, wala pang 12%. Tinitingnan ko kasi yung datos ng pagtaas ng vaccination rate dito sa Buanga Peninsula. As to date, 94% na po ang uh, teaching and non-teaching natin dito. Ang mga learners natin ay we have... Uh, Um, yun, nando doon ang challenge kasi wala pang 20%. So we have some, some something like 16.25% sa learners. But in Isabela, imagine 25% po ang learners uh, vaccinated. That, that means yung mga sasali sa bagamat hindi pa natin na-achieve yung tinatawag na 70% ay makikita natin na tumataas, mabilis ang pagtaas ng ating um, pagdating sa vaccination rate. So nagpapasalamat kami sa media sa sa pagtulong niya sa amin sa advocacy. Ah, uh, I agree uh, Dalia with the report of uh, RD uh, RD Ruth. Uh, kasi kami sa Exicom, we meet every week at nagre-report naman regularly sa estado ng uh, region ninyo. Uh, also lal- lalo na sa development sa Isabela. So uh, alam namin 'yon and uh, palagay ko yung yung ready na, na talaga na nasa assessment kasi binibigay namin yung decision making sa regional directors uh, sa mga regional offices kasi kung lahat na desisyon ay gawin sa central office uh, aabotan tayo ng uh, ano kayang siglo dahil uh, siyempre uh, pag pupunta pa sa central office uh, pag i-discuss ng gusto and and that's exactly what regionalization is all about regionalization decentralization devolves decision making to the regional offices and therefore to the SDSs and and all that and and every week of course they report to us so we, we knew exactly what was happening in in Isabela and and the reasons why uh, the local government uh, was hesitant at that time and we're very happy that the the picture has uh, 
changed uh, uh, already and possibilities for limited face-to-face -face is already uh, uh, very uh, optimistic. Thank you. Salamat po sa kasagutan sa ating sa tanong. Sa tingin ko po, nandito na si Sir Ronald. Sir Ronald, please uh, come in. Please open your camera. Ayan. Yes, yes magandang hapon sa ating lahat, lalo na sa ating uh, Secretary. Uh, naisagot na po una yung unang katanungan natin. So maraming salamat po sa inyong katanungan. At kakasunod, may kasunod po akong tanong. Uh, Okay lang po ba? Itutuloy natin. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. So, nababahala po yung mga magulang ng ating mga mag-aaral dito sa Isabela o sa lungsod ng Isabela. Kung sakasakali um, itutuloy po yung uh, pilot testing natin o ang face-to-face -face classes po, uh, kami po ay nababahala dahil ang Isabela po ay uh, ka kakaunti lang po yung hospital dito at uh, especially yung hospital namin ay low class level. At saka most of the patient yung uh, before nung nagkaroon po ng uh, nagkaroon po ng COVID-19 yung mga uh, mga tao dito. So karamihan ng mga tao ay dinadala pa rin talaga sa Zamboanga City kung saan doon sila pinagagamot. So kung saka sakali magkakaroon o magcontaminate po ang ating mga mag-aaral. So hindi po kaya ng ating mga pasilidad dito sa Isabela. Ano po yung stand? ng ating uh, kinaukulan? Uh, gusto kong sagutin yan. In the first place, inaalaw natin ang, ang Isabela, di ba? Dahil level 2 na siya, ibig sabihin, uh, mababa ang, ang, uh, ang level ng uh, infection uh, numbers and so on. At saka sa, sa pilot din, maski sabihin natin hindi kasama ang Isabela, sa pilot, 15,000 learners yon Ni isa, walang uh, natatamaan ng COVID. So, uh, right from the beginning, the possibility of, uh, of uh, a massive infection in Isabela, uh, baka hindi mangyayari dahil mababa naman talaga ang risk assessment niyan ng uh, Department of Health. Pero kung level 3, halimbawa ang Isabela, hindi kami papayag. And I'm sure Ruth will also not, not, not agree kung level 3. Kagaya ng NCR, uh, hindi natin sinama ang NCR. Puno ng hospital ang NCR, libo-libo yung mga doktor doon, pero hindi tayo pumayag dahil ang assessment ay ano, free. In the case of Isabela, ang assessment is level 2. At saka, uh, nakikita natin sa ating pilot na, na sinubukan natin itong mga low-risk assessment na mga communities, mga schools, eh hindi naman, uh, hindi naman nagiging uh, reality yung ating um, Uh, what what worried us about about infections and so on hindi naman nangyari napakalaki ang sample noon 15,000 plus ka learners so that possibility uh, is uh, probably um, makokontrol yan and and if you are aware ang risk assessment kasi hindi lamang ang uh, ilan ba yung nagkakasakit ng covid ang risk assessment yung hospital says yung capacity ng Department of Health to respond to to a crisis lahat na yung tinitingnan and ang overall assessment sa Isabela is uh, level 2 at this particular uh, your particular time so Ronald na ano ba can you, can you hear me kasi unstable daw ang ating ano ating connection Uh, that is my point. Kasi lahat na bagay sa buhay ay may risk. So alam natin anything can happen. Whether it is COVID, whether it is war, whether it is smallpox or whether it is cholera, may risk talaga. Kaya ang ginagawa ng Department of Health, ina-assess yung risk. Gaano kataas ang risk halimbawa sa Isabela? Ang assessment nila ay level 1 and 2. So, ibig sabihin, tinitingnan na nila yung 
facilities, lahat-lahat, ang record ng number of uh, um, infections, uh, ano, very, ano, sila very, very thorough on that. At saka, winawardingan kami kaagad pag sa tingin nila, dapat uh, uh, tigilan ng isang activity ng department. So, the risk is minimized compared to the risks which were recognized before and which made uh, Isabella at that time, a few months ago, na hesitant sila. Oo. So what, uh, halimbawa, you, you ask yourself, we ask ourselves, what are your chances of dying today or dying tomorrow? And, and so on. And tinitingnan nila yun. What are the chances na uh, magkaroon ng outbreak? Uh, yun, because... We are dealing with with very very uncertain uh, uh, situations and and data. So it's like insurance also. You 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 measure what is risky and ano bang tinataya natin. Dahil everything has an element of risk, and an assessment ng Department of Health that element of risk in Isabella has been already reduced and attended to. Uh, I hope I made myself uh, I know, um, uh, clear. And um, your, your question is very important. You see, um, I have noticed, and I was thinking last night, when we decided, president decided, mag-lockdown, hindi mag-face-to-face, and daming nagalit. Buong mundo nagalit. Pinapuntahan kami ng lahat ng ambassador. Bakit kayo nag ano? Bakit kayo nag lockdown? Bakit kayo nagsasara? Ngayon naman na binabalik na natin ang school, ngayon nag lumalabas itong mga reservations. Pero at the time when we were we were ano bombarded and we were attacked, we were excoriated and uh, we were called criminals, etc. Uh, there was at that time uh, there was silence but now that we are implementing it of course the concerns are coming out and we have to recognize that and we rely on the Department of Health yun din ang instructions ng President wag kayong mag-initiate ng any hakbang without the you know, uh, the advice of the Department of Health hindi kami gagalaw kung uh, sabihan kami ng Department of Health, oh, tigil kayo dyan. So, so ayun. It is really what is the risk about the risk of having uh, Omicron or, or Delta or, or, or what? So, ayan. So, ngayon, ngayon na pumayag na after two years of noise, after two years of condemnation, after two years of very, very bad uh, 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 reactions, eh, ngayon that we are implementing, eh, nag-surface na itong mga concerns, which I, I believe have to, be, uh, have to be, of course, to be handled and to be answered. And I thank you for bringing those, these matters up because these were not brought up at the height of the debate. The impression was that the entire world was saying, Pilipinas na lang ang hindi nag-face to face. Classmate natin si Dibote, wherever Dibote is. Na dalawang bansa na lang, ganyan-ganyan. At sa kan daming ambassador nagpunta sa akin, bakit hindi kayo nag-face to face? Ngayon mag-face to face tayo, pero maingat tayo. Only where the risk is minimized. And in the case of Isabella, the risk has gone down as uh, informed by the Department of Health. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella has, Secretary. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Isabella is, has a very special place in the history of Mindanao, as all of you uh, are, are, are aware of. And we don't want to uh, impose more suffering on, on the people and also on the learners. Thank you. Maraming salamat din po, Secretary sa inyong napakaganda at napakalinaw na uh, sagot na naibigay sa amin sa ngayon sa hapong ito. Kami po ay nagagalag at masaya na naway uh, uh, itutuloy na po namin ang aming uh, testing pilot ng aming face-to-face -face sa darating na linggo. Maraming salamat at magandang hapon. Thank salamat you, Sir Ronald, sa inyong katanungan.
Okay, over to you, Direct Nina. Thank you very much, Ma'am Dalia. And to proceed, ang susunod po na magtatanong, tawagin po natin si Ma'am Julie Idol Durens Alcalde ng Radio Agong 107.1 Pagadian City. Ma'am Julie? Lalaki po siya, direct Nina. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Andiyan na ba si Sir? Andiyan na po. Ang gandang hapon po. Nakamute ba si Sir? Yeah. Okay. Mayong uh, utos tanan, Ma'am Secretary, mayong utos. And uh, magandang hapon po sa mga assistant secretary. Eh, uh, nasagot na po yung ano? Nasagot na po yung ano? Una kong katanungan kanina, yung mga plano. Uh, assessment lang po na yung ano, uh, ginagawa ngayon ng DPED. Ito na lang yung ano, pangalawang tanong ko. Mm, secretary uh, Briones, kung uh, papayagan po ba kung uh, sakali ang uh, 100% face-to-face classes sa buong bansa, I-require ba po natin ang mga estudyante na fully vaccinated lahat para makapasok po sa ating mga eskwilahan. Kasi po may mga parents po natin ngayon na ayaw nila pabakunahan itong ating uh, mga kabataan. So i-require ba natin 100% na fully vaccinated ang lahat na papasok sa ating eskwila, both private and uh, public? Ah, yung tanong uh, kung uh, papayagan ba ko yung fully vaccinated na mag face to face, yun ang ating policy na para sa mga, kasi may mga parents, may mga bata, at saka yung sinasabi ko na nga na mga uh, public officials, also local governments, etc. na uh, gusto nila ang face to face. Ang policy is face to face, ay talagang uh, kailangan bakunado yung ano bakunado yung mga bata and we have made that uh, a policy but we are not excluding uh, those na hindi bakunado from uh, continuing their education because face to face is only part of blended learning so mayroon silang uh, alternative kung ayaw nilang magpabakuna kasi alam mo halimbawa hindi lamang sa uh, Mindanao o sa ibang bansa o sa ibang bahagi ng bansa natin uh, napakalaking porsyento ng mga parents na gusto ng face to face at saka pumupayag silang bakunahan yung anak nila written yan the rene require namin uh, kung hindi hindi basta-basta sino mag tatangay-tangay magdala ng bata sasabihin anak ko ito bakunahan mo siya eh, sin sinasabi namin you have to show proof that you are really the, the, this is one instance when fathers will admit that they are fathers of their children uh, or, or 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 mothers uh, they have to show uh, proof kasi kailangan may uh, consent ang parents written talaga yung rene require uh, natin so uh, we want to be fair to those who have reservations which were not uh, Uh, at that time, uh, expressed with the same fervor and passion at the height of the debate two years ago when DepEd was, uh, ano, wala na, <laughs> I mean, uh, during that time, ang nag a sa DepEd, ayun namang gustong-gusto talaga ng, ano, so ma ma mahalata natin kung gaano din kadami ang gustong-gusto ng face-to-face, -face. pati mga foreigners, pati mga Pilipino na nasa abroad, eh, galit na galit sila. Pero ngayon, nag sinasurface na itong mga reservations. So ang policy ngayon, eh, kung mag-face-to-face -face tayo, ay eh, talagang uh, hinahanap natin yung mga bakunado. Kasi yung numbers na lumalabas, sinishare ni Ruth kanina, not only in Isabela, but uh, in many parts of the country, marami talaga, dumadami yung gusto ng face-to-face -face na pumapayag ang mga parents. At palagay ko, hindi kami papatawarin sa DepEd, babarili na naman kami sa DepEd kung sabihin natin na ihalo natin yung bakunado at hindi bakunado. We, we will also have a, a lot of uh, 
will also have problems with the parents who agreed in the first place to have their children uh, vaccinated. So the policy right now is uh, we prefer children who are vaccinated. For those who are not vaccinated, there are other ways by which they can continue their uh, learning without having to participate in face-to-face. -face. Yun ang ano, ko tingin ko. Ewan ko, correct me, uh, Malcolm, correct me, Yusek Dads, or si ano, uh, Yusek Revs, kung uh, tama ba yung sinasabi ko. <laughs> Yun ang tingin ko. Uh -oh. Declared policy natin yan eh. Kasi it's also a national policy. That we are a public institution, of course, as you know. Uh -oh. See you, Sek Dad. Sandit. Sandit. Malcolm, Secretary. Yes, Sek Revs. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh, Director Nina. Yes, go ahead, Asik Malcolm. Gusto ko lang kumpirmahin yung binanggit ng ating kalihim. No? Uh, ito po ay batay doon sa guidelines na atin pong inilabas at uh, sa kasalukuyan po ay uh, pinipinilize, pinapinalize na natin yung ating comprehensive guideline at ayon sa kasunduan between DepEd and uh, the Department of Health, uh, malinaw po doon yung ating uh, patakaran na kung saan ang mga lalahok sa limited face to face na uh, sa hanay ng ating mga mag-aaral ay preferred no to be vaccinated so talagang uh, we give uh, preference for children uh, vaccinated children learners to participate in our limited face to face ngayon kung talagang may mga magulang na sa tingin nila ay ayaw nilang pabakunahan yung kanilang mga anak for whatever reason uh, Definitely, uh, ako, ako yung magulang na yun, hindi ko rin papayagan yung anak ko na pumunta sa school dahil hindi nga bakunado yung aking anak uh, dahil alam natin na yung vaccination ay protection. Uh, Unang-una, protection ito sa atin no, para hindi nga tayo mahawa ng COVID. So, uh, at uh, hindi naman natin bibitawan, uh, Director Nina, yung ating uh, remote learning. So kung hindi po makaka-participate ang mga mag-aaral sa paaralan, ay tuloy-tuloy naman ho yung ating uh, distance learning o yung home-based learning natin. So gusto ko lang pong kumpirmahin yung sekretary na tama po yung nabanggit ninyo. Maraming salamat. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Ayan, ayan. Sinabi na ni Assistant Secretary na tama si Secretary kasi kailangan talagang uh, magiging consistent yung uh, sagot namin at saka mas alam ng aking third level officials at members ng EXICOM yung detalye ng ating uh, policy. But the overall policy of government, of course, is to encourage vaccination. So uh, we proceed from there. Even Secretary. as we respect those who don't want and who are now articulating their views uh, uh, in a debate which started two years ago. And where we were feeling very lonely at that time. Uh, Director Nina? Yes, go ahead, Asik. Uh, Ma'am, gusto ko lang po ding idagdag na batay din sa ating pong guidelines. Uh, yung mga teachers naman nakahawak ng actual classes no, ng limited face-to-face -face, ay talaga pong dapat vaccinated. So yun po ay talagang malinaw na sa guidelines natin na only teachers who are vaccinated can handle actual face-to-face -face classes. Yes. Director Nina. Oh. Ano, uh, can I say something? That, that, is, that is very clear. Dahil um, mahirap. Uh, we also have to respect the, the desires of parents who agreed to have their children uh, vaccinated and, and protected. Uh, and uh, sa pagka ngayon, overall, sa buong bansa, Uh, mas marami yung ano nag-agree sa vaccination at saka dumadami on a daily basis so uh, we also must uh, respect the the choice as we try to respect also those who who uh, have their own uh, reservations about vaccination secretary maybe rd ruth wants to add yes rd yeah. Kasi dito po sa, ano, sa Zumbanga Peninsula, no? pagdating sa usapin sa vaccination, 
Ah, uh, ito yung nakita ko na. Mahina ka, Rolf. Ah, mahina pa rin. Nakamax. Yes. Nakamax na po yung audio ko. Anyway, sige. Um, uh, sinasabi ko po yung naging karanasan ko dito mula nung uh, tumating ako sa pagdating sa vaccination rate. Uh, uh, kangina, doon sa mga guro, sabi ko nga nung September, tinitingnan ko kasi yung ano po, yung uh, yung datos natin na uh, mula sa 12% na ngayon ay 94% na po ang vaccination rate natin sa teaching and non-teaching. Um, malaking tulong po kasi yung adbokasya at saka yung din pong tamang paghahanda at informasyon na naibibigay natin ano lalo-lalo na sa mga magulang. Um, we're happy to note na in terms of uh, school sa tool po natin sa school readiness, pinakamalaking porsyento po, actually 65% po ng, ng the whole uh, number based on the total number of schools uh, ay handang-handa na sa pagbubukas ng face-to-face. Yes. Yes. -face. So isang, at nakikita ko din po yung pagtaas ng vaccination rate na katulad na itong nakaraang last two months na Uh, kasabay po ng kagustuhan na, ng mga magulang na mag face to face ay nandoon din po yung uh, kagustuhan nila o pagpayag nila sa ano sa pagpapabaksin ng kanilang mga anak. So tama yung sinabi ni Asik Malcolm na uh, I remember nung one of the press con pa nga isang magulang ang nagsabi na baka pwede daw na maging factor sa pagtaas ng grado ng bata, maging considerasyon yung kung vaccinated na. So ibig sabihin nandoon yung Um, mas ako nakikita ko mas mataas po yung porsyento ng yes. uh, sa mga magulang na gusto talagang ipavaccinate. So yung kagustuhan nila po na mag-participate sa face to face ay nandoon din kaakibat po yung kagustuhan nila na mag-avail po ng vaccine. So ay ay uh, based on um, the trend based on the data presented. So uh, kung iyahambing ko po doon sa sa pagtaas doon sa mga guro at sa mga nag na tumataas ng um, pagtaas po ng ng datos ng nagpapakuna ay kung halos parehos din po ang 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 trend dito sa sa ating mga parents so kaya nakikita ko actually um out of 2500 schools ma'am Liling ay eh, 17 1700 po yung school na na magpa-participate that that's about um Um, 65% of the total ano total population and ang inihintay lang natin yung sa Buanga City po kasi ang, until now is um uh, level 3 but once na makategorize sila into level 2 well the number will ano will um will increase no so um, malaking tulong po talaga yung yung uh, tamang informasyon at saka yung pong um yung koordinasyon po natin sa Department of Health yung hindi po tayo dumitigil sa ating advokasya na pagpapakuna at uh, magandang magandang um, um, magandang ehemplo po yung uh, nakita nila na naging matagumpay yung ating pilot uh, uh, yes. limited face to face kasi hindi po talaga mula po nung November uh, continuous ang taas po ng ano ang taas po ng gusto talagang mag mag, uh, mag face to face dito na sabi nga namin actually minention niyo yung risk uh, kasi Katulad nung sa isang, actually, Isabela City po, sila, sila, sila yung pinakamababa dun sa number ng mga schools na magpa-participate. But sa amin, hindi na, katulad ng sinabi ko, um, yung risk hindi mawawala yan. Pero may iwasan natin if we have, kaya nga pinapalakas natin yung mga preventive measures. Ano-ano yung mga yun? So sabi ko, yung advocacy natin sa vaccination, hindi natatapos yan hanggat hindi natin na-achieve yung herd immunity yung koordinasyon natin sa Department of Health at saka sa IATF at lalong-lalo na po yung ating ano yung yung daily monitoring yun po yung pinalalakas talaga natin na dapat araw-araw na lalaman natin kung uh, meron bang transmission na nagaganap at um, alam nyo gusto po naming um, I, I want to uh, Uh, as I mentioned earlier, comment, kasi ano po ito, shared responsibility. So napakaganda po ng, ng partisipasyon ng mga magulang at saka ng komunidad. No, yun ang nakita namin no, sa face-to-face -face kasi na-involve sila. So kaya siguro malaking bagay po yun, yung, yung involvement ng, ng, ng mga magulang at saka ng mga local government units 
dito sa ating limited face-to-face -face, at saka yung pagbibigay po ng tamang in in information. Kasi kanina, may mga magulang pa rin po at may mga iba kasi ang akala nila lahat papasok na hindi po. Uh, katulad nung ginawa natin na kalahati muna uh, or yung mga 15 to 20 muna at yung kalahati ay nagmo-modular o online. So hindi po pag sinabi na kaya nga po yung word natin limited, di ba? Nandiyan pa rin po yan. So hindi po ito 100 capacity at um, uh, ito po ay unti-unti ang pagdadagdag uh, natin. Uh, at uh, minention kang ina yung word na progressive. So ibig sabihin, um, hindi naman sabay-sabay magbubukas kaagad. So yung masusing paghahanda, titingnan natin muna yan at bubusisiin natin kung talaga bang ready-ready na at yung tamang koordinasyon. In other words, lahat ng mekanismo para talagang um, mapigilan Uh, mabawasan yung risk na sinasabi na alam ko yung agam-agam ng mga magulang ay nandyan. So, yun lang ang pwede nating ibigay na yung tamang paghahanda po at tamang informasyon ay ibigay natin. Maraming salamat po. Oo. Baka ang uh, other members of the Exico may want to to contribute and, and give their own uh, perspectives. Uh, yung si Krebsi, kasi sa operations, kita nila yung uh, how it is working out in the entire country. Si Dads naman, yung implications sa curriculum kasi we talk about blended learning na kasama ang uh, kasama ang face-to-face. -face. At saka yung sa ibang bansa, kasi tayo palagi natin, bakit hindi tayo kagaya ni ganito? Bakit hindi tayo kagaya ng ganon? Ang classmate natin ay si Dibote lang. Kung ako si Dibote, magagalit na talaga ako dyan na palagi na lang Uh, kinocompare sila sa sa atin na mag-classmate tayo. Uh, um, so, um, sa ibang bansa, yung alam kong ador na ador natin dahil number one yan sa buong Southeast Asia sa lahat ng mga examen, sa lahat ng mga assessment, talagang pinakasikat. Pero, hindi naman nag- Tanong sa parents, gusto ba ninyo ng face-to-face? -face? Gusto ba ninyo ng blending? Nag-decide ang, ang Minister of Education. That's it. Mag-decide na ganitong number ng uh, oras para sa ano, that's it. Ay, ito ang requirements sa teachers, that's it. Sinasabi yung mga bata, pumasok kayo sa ganitong araw, Ganitong oras, pagkatapos ng klase, uwi e kayo diretso sa bahay ninyo. Huwag kayong maglingger-lingger. Sunod naman ang mga bata. So, kanya-kanyang uh, estilo, kanya-kanyang estilo yan sa iba't ibang bansa. Na hindi ibig sabihin, uh, porke nagsabi na sila nag face to face sila, e eh, talagang 100% face-to-face. -face. Yung iba isang araw lang eh. Kalahating araw, kasi importante din ang online. Pareho silang importante eh. Yung face-to-face -face at saka yung online at saka uh, even yung modular, yung other learning uh, approaches. Dahil ang ating mga bata, handain talaga natin para sa kanilang uh, future. Ay si ano, gusto magsalita na si Yusik Dads, magdagdag. Sige po, Secretary, let's call Yusik Dads, after which Yusik Revsi would also like to um, yeah. have additional responses. Uh -oh. um, maraming salamat, Director Nina, at good afternoon po, Ma'am Liling, uh, at sa mga kasama ko sa Exicom. Tama po yung, nag, ano po talaga, yung pong sinasabi natin, uh, katulad ng nabanggit nyo na ay, hindi naman pwedeng para parehas yung anyo ng sistema ng pag-implement ng limited face-to-face. -face. Kami po sa curriculum and instruction ay nagsasabi na may mga paraan din naman upang yung pagkikita ng teacher at ng bata habang uh, nandun sa paaralan kasi nga po hindi naman araw-araw nandun ay kailangang ma-maximize. So priority po yung pagtingin kung yung mga nagawa sa mga sagot sa modules ay talagang alam ng bata. O, yan po ay ini-encourage ini natin ang mga kasamang guro na bigyang pansin ng mga yon Ang iba naman po na nakita natin, malikhain, Uh, blended nga, uh, bago dumating sa silid-aralan, nagbasa na ang mga bata ng mga kailangang aralin. Kaya po nagiging nauubos yung kaunting panahon kasi hindi pa ho yung buong oras ang nilalagay natin, limited nga siya, na ginagamit po sa pagpapalalim ng pagkakaunawa. So nag nagkakaroon ng mga discussion sa mga uh, key concepts, mga big ideas na dapat matutunan ng bata. 
at ang isa pong naibahagi na natin sa karamihan ay ito pong limited face-to-face ay gustong-gusto ng mga bata at pati na ng mga magulang kasi nga po nagkakaroon ng mas mabilis na feedback ang bata sa kanilang mga ginagawa at uh, um, hindi po talaga kailangan araw-araw o yung dating kung isang oras siya ay isang oras. Ang importante po, nagkaroon na ng pagkakataon na sa pag-aaral ay nakikita ni, ng bata ang kanyang teacher at natatanong niya kung mayroon siya mga hindi masyadong naunawaan. Yun lang po ang gusto namin bigyang diin na uh, hindi naman kailangan buong araw-araw at uh, yung pong dating oras ang gugugulin. Ang importante po, may istratehiya na yung panahon na magkikita si teacher at ang bata ay nagagamit sa mas napaka mga bagay. Siyempre po, yung pag uh, tinatawag nating recovery, kung mayroong mga tinatawag na losses, ay priority rin po yun, yung mga remedial mechanisms. Kasi nga po, uh, uh, siyempre, uh, dahil hindi nila nakita ang teacher, ay may mga sinasabi nga na baka hindi masyadong na-master ng bata. Ito po ay importante-importante. Tayo naman po ay talagang nag-identify ng most essential learning competencies para siguruhin na ang pag-uusapan ay yung napakahalaga na gagamitin ng mga bata sa kanilang patuloy na pag-aaral sa mga susunod na pasukan, pati na rin po sa kanilang mga buhay. Thank you po. God bless po. Thank you very much, Yusik Dads. Uh, curriculum perspective naman po iyon. Ngayon, uh, let's call on Undersecretary Revsi Escobedo. Yusik Revsi. Uh, magandang uh, uh, hapon, maayong hapon sa uh, tanan. Uh, mahalagang uh, mahalaga para sa atin na huwag kalimutan yung mga pamantayan sa pagbubukas uh, at pag-implement nitong uh, limited face-to-face. Meron tayong uh, limang mahalagang uh, pamantayan at alitumpunin. Una, uh, bago yung pagbubukas ng uh, paaralan para uh, mag-participate sa face-to-face, kailangan masuri sa pamamagitan ng safe school assessment tool. Merong uh, ginagamit na tool ang ating mga field officials, ang ating mga uh, school uh, principals, uh, school head, at uh, nandyan ang ating uh, superintendent uh, tungkol dito sa safe school assessment. Kung uh, uh, ito ba ay uh, safe para sa pagbubukas ng uh, klase. At uh, itong safe school assessment tool natin ay nakabatay sa apat na framework. no Itong uh, safe, safe operation ng school, yung teaching, teaching and learning, yung inclusivity na dapat uh, makakalahok yung most marginalized uh, students. At uh, importante yung protection and well-being ng student and teachers. Pangalawa, uh, pamantayan, yung assessment ng DOH. Importante po ito dahil uh, dito malalaman kung uh, yung lugar kung saan ang school ay gusto mag-participate ay nasa anong antas ng alert level. Kasi pag sinabi ng DOH na alert level 3 yung uh, lugar na yon ay automaticong uh, suspended yung uh, face-to-face classes. At uh, dito sa alert level system, dito na rin sinasabi ng uh, DOH na nakafactor in na yung kanilang uh, uh, pag, pagtingin batay sa galaw ng COVID sa lugar at yung bed capacity na mentioned kanina. At, uh, at sa alert level na ito, pinapahintulutan lamang tayo ng DOH na magbukas sa alert level 1 and alert level 2 na, na lugar. Pangatlo, mahalaga din yung parent consent. Uh, binibigyan natin ng kalayaan ng mga magulang kung paha- pahihintulutan nila yung kanilang uh, anak na pumasok at uh, mag-participate dito sa uh, limited face-to-face. Hindi naman natin inuubliga na lahat ng mga anak ay uh, pumasok. Uh, may binibigyan pa rin natin ng kalayaan. Subalit, tayo naman, ini-encourage natin ang mga bata at mga magulang na lumahap sila sa uh, face-to-face dahil uh, sa uh, mga studies, uh, isang pinaka-epektibo pa rin ang, uh, na modality, yung uh, face-to-face classes. And an- isa pang uh, pamantay natin, yung LGU support. Mahalaga ang uh, LGU concurrence na kung magbubukas ang isang uh, eskwelahan, 
ay dapat may suporta ng local government uh, unit dahil kinakailangan din ng uh, ang partisipasyon ng LGU ng komunidad sa pagbubukas ng klase. At ang panghuli, itong aming face-to-face -face kahit nasa antas ng uh, progressive face-to-face uh, -face na o progressive expansion, uh, kami ay mag, mag, uh, sasagawa pa rin ng periodic assessment. Dahil kahit na marami ng lumahok, mas uh, uh, nangangailangan ng mga pag-aaral o assessment itong aming ginagawa ng na face-to-face uh, -face classes under the uh, expand, uh, expanded uh, stage dahil gusto nating malaman ano pa yung mga gaps, ano pa ang kailangan i-improve at ano pa ang mga pulisiya ang dapat gawin para mas epektibo at episyente itong pagsasagawa ng ating uh, limited face-to-face sa -face, uh, panahon na meron tayong kinakaharap na pandemic. Yun lamang po, uh, Secretary at uh, Director Nina. Salamat yung si Krebsi. Salamat yung si Krebs. Uh -oh. Maraming salamat to all those responses. Yes, um, Sir Julie, I hope we were able to answer uh, all your question. Okay, maraming salamat po sa mga uh, sa Dipid Family at saka kay uh, Secretary Leonor Berenice. Thank you po. Oh, Dagan salamat. Nakabisita on ta akong usob sa inyong region. Kay gimingaw na ko sa inyong kuan inasal nga kuan nga maalat. <laughs> Kakagutom sa loy mo. This is very it can only be found in your region. Diba? Sige. Yes, Ma'am Dalia, go ahead. Sige, tuloy-tuloy po tayo. Ngayon ay kausapin naman natin ang ating media partner from Sambuanga del Norte. Tatawagin natin si Ma'am Raswini Montaliana ng Sumada DXAA 92.5 FM at Infinite Balita 98.1 FM. Please go ahead, ma'am. Si ma'am Raswini. Baka na-drop okay. si ma'am Dalia or oo. Oh, oh. uh -huh. Siguro na-drop siya. Anyway, alam ko naman, pwede na naman sila makabalik ko. Okay, may I read uh, her question? Teachers and DepEd staff who are not vaccinated against COVID-19 are still reporting to their respective offices vulnerable for contamination of the said virus. Do the DepEd or have an order or policy? No vaccine, no teach policy to prevent them against the virus. Um, ang pagkakaalam ko ha and I have my secretary under secretaries and assistant secretaries to to correct me. Ah, uh, ang pagkakaalam ko uh, hindi natin ni encourage na mag physically uh, ano uh, uh, pupunta ang ating mga non-vaccinated um, teachers kasi the first thing you are asked at the gate pa lang eh tinatanong ka na kung vaccinated ka ba o hindi. Kasi otherwise, kasi we have to protect those who are also inside. Ang, ang, ang issue dito ay pinaprotect natin yung ayaw magpavaccinate but at the same time, i-protect natin yung nagpavaccinate. And um, dumadami yung nagpavaccinate. So, uh, kailangan uh, and pinag-aralan na ito ng gusto sa ating legal, ano, legal team sa uh, DepEd na while we respect the choices that you make kasi sabihin natin that you have a right to make make decisions over your own body but then also we have to respect the bodies of other people the bodies of the rest of the country kaya the state has an obligation to protect itself and to protect its people Oo, so so yun ang ang binabalanse diyan. Ang pagkakaalam ko and they are here kaya gustong-gusto kong nandito sila palagi because kung hindi tama yung information ko, uh, nako-correct nila ako kaagad kung hindi tama yung opinion ko. Ang 
Ang, ang tingin ko, even if you go to the central office, hindi, hindi ka naman talaga i-allow na papasok kung hindi ka vaccinated. I, I, talagang ititest ka muna. Uh, in NCR, uh, dati rinirequire nila ang um, RT-PCR, no? na bago ka makapasok sa isang public office. Pero um, nagbago ang isip ng Department of Health dahil ang Omicron napakabilis kumalat. By the time nalalabas yung result ng uh, PCR, eh, namasyal na si Omicron kung saan-saan. Mas mabilis pa ang Omicron kaysa paglabas ng resulta. Kaya hindi nila ano na, uh, ibang, ibang methods na ang uh, iniisip nila. Uh, Awan ko sa ibang mga ano, uh, gusto ko lang i-confirm ito but uh, in central office you cannot enter. Many public offices you have to have uh, for the protection not only of yourself who you have particular beliefs but also the protection of those who who have uh, agreed to uh, cooperate with the uh, government policy. So Si, si ba nandito si si Rebsi is, is a lawyer uh, uh, si uh, Asik uh, Badong is, is a lawyer uh, ang ang ating legal department last year pa yan ang kapal ng study about that kasi noon noon pa sinabi na namin tingnan natin yung uh, the, the legal ramifications of a decision uh, uh, like this one, kung recognize ba yung right of the state to protect itself and to protect its population at saka yung the exercise of the police power of the state. And, and marami namang mga uh, literature dyan, marami namang karanasan dyan. So, uh, y- yun ang tanong ko and ang sagot ko at baka gustong i-correct ako ng aking mga uh, Yusek at saka ASEC kasi they're very familiar also with the policy. I think we can call on ASEC Malcolm Garma. ASEC yes, sir. ASEC Malcolm, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Director Nina and uh, Dalia. Uh, una-una, gusto nating uh, ibatay no, yung sagot natin sa datos na natin para nang sa ganun hindi matamuna no uh, itong ganitong issue yung ating mga uh, sinasagawang programa kung kayo po ako nagkakamali uh, batay sa datos ng ating uh, Death and Task Force on COVID no? na pinamumunuan nila Director Lope Santos at nila uh-huh. Dr. Uh, Dumlao ay halos uh, nasa 5% na lang ang mga ang mga guro at uh, kawani na hindi pa ho nabakunahan. So ibig po sabihin nito, uh, majority o almost 100% ng ating mga teaching and non-teaching personnel ay bakunado na. At ito po yung mga makikita natin na nasa, school, nasa skwelahan. Pangalawa, uh, nilinaw ko na kanina na non-negotiable yung hahawak ng limited face-to-face classes. Dapat bakunado. Ngayon, uh, paano yung mga hindi talaga nagpabakuna at uh, gustong pumunta sa school? Hindi na hon natin sila pinipigilan pero patay din doon sa IATF resolution at patay na rin sa ating pong guideline ay dapat meron silang RT-PCR test or yung uh, antigen test na ipapakita upang sila ay makapasok dito sa mga establishment na ito. Pangatlo, uh, ang ating pong ano, sekretary, ang ating pong uh, Bureau of uh, Human Resource and Organizational Development, o BH or OD, ay maglalabas po ng tinatawag nating uh, uh, pinalinaw na guideline on alternative work arrangement. So dito isa inakasaad kung ano ba ang maaring maging uh, trabaho ng uh, mga guro na hindi bakunado kumpara doon sa mga guro na nabakunahan. So upang magbigyan ng uh, tawagin na natin yung salitang hustisya no o fairness na uh, o patas na pagtingin uh, doon sa mga guro natin na talagang they they went out of their way uh, to be vaccinated. So ito po yung mga titingnan natin at uh, pinipilit nating balansehin no 
sa ngayon. Ulitin ko lang, uh, Ma'am Dalia, para doon sa nagtanong, na yung hahawak ng klase ng limited face-to-face, non-negotiable, they are vaccinated hmm. teachers. Correct. Tama. Ah, nandito din si Jose Kaleng Pasqua kasi siya ang nag-chair ng task force natin ng sa kabuuang departamento uh, hinggil sa uh, sa COVID-19. So siya ang um, malaking papel sa mga uh, pag-contribute at saka pag-shape ng ating mga policies at saka nagko-compile ng mga datos uh, hinggil dito. At kung anong nangyayari sa ating departamento, nangyayari din yan sa lahat na opisina. Hahanapan ka talaga bago ka makapasok ng isang uh, public uh, uh, institution or building. Uh, Yusek uh, Nina, I, I, uh, Yusek Nina, Nina, Director Nina, I suggest, na-promote ka tuloy, uh, I suggest that uh, we also uh, hear from Yusek Alain. Nandito naman siya. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, um, uh, okay, clarify nga kasi ma- malaga alam mo itong mga tanong na ito nagsasabi sa atin kung anong hindi pa naliliwanag kung, kung saan hindi pa maliliwanag maliwanag sa ating uh, ating mga clientele sa parents sa teachers lahat ang, ang concern ko ang teacher eh kasi I'm surprised really dahil ay uh, Uh, isang ano na siguro isang library na ng issuances ang ginawa natin uh, pero itong mga tanong na ito nandiyan pa rin kaya kailangan at sikasuhin yung si Kaleen Hello ma'am po uh, tama po yung sinabi niyo ma'am na meron pong uh, memorandum na na nilabas ng uh, Deped Task Force COVID na firmado at aprobado po ng ating kalihim na nagsasabi ng mga patakaran tungkol dyan sa pagre-report ng mga teachers na hindi pa nabakunahan at kung ano ang mga requirement nila. So, ang kwag po talaga natin dyan ay uh, ang magre-report po ay yung mga bakunado na at kung hindi ho bakunado yan, kinakailangan ni RT-PCR yan na test. At uh, marami pa ho tayong patakaran. Uh, nandito ho sa uh, teams natin ngayon, si Gian ng uh, School Health Division, I'm asking Gian to please upload dito sa chat yung ating aid memo on the vaccination issue at saka yung Deped Task Force COVID uh, memo on the same issue para naman lahat yung mga media at yung mga opisyalis natin na nandito ngayon sa chat ay uh, makakuha ng kopya at mabasa yung kopya niyan. I-upload yan ni Gian ngayon ma'am dyan sa ating, kuhan, sa ating chat ating chat. At uh, para sa ganun ay uh, mabigyan natin lahat ng uh, guidelines at instruction lahat yung mga naririto. At pero tama yung sinabi nyo kanina ma'am na uh, talagang uh, hindi natin uh, ninanayit na yung hindi bakunado ay mapunta sa parolan dahil nga uh, sa protection din nila at sa protection din ng ating mga guru at mga bata. Uh, ayun, ayun, yun na ang sagot. Sana uh, I have also uh, advised our, uh, our directors or SDSs to to uh, make sure na our teachers, kasi sila ang nagtatanong eh, siyempre nasasagap yan ng media, naririnig ng media, pinapasa din sa atin yung mga tanong na yan, eh, uh, para ma-clarify. Kaya ako nga mismo, frankly, nagugulat ako na Uh, naka ilang issuances na tayo pero mukhang hindi pa rin uh, uh, masyadong uh, maliwanag lalo na sa teachers ako ang concern ko ang teachers natin at saka yung staff dahil uh, sa kanila nang gagaling yung mga tanong at dinidiretso yan sa akin araw-araw nakakatanggap ako ng text naka, minsan naman may mora minsan naman may Mayroong good morning, pero kuminsan eh, hindi nag-good morning uh, and so on. Pero uh, kailangang, ano, kailangang malaman ng mga teachers natin yan. Yun ang na, nakikita ko na we should uh, uh, um, exert perhaps more effort on the part of DEPED to see to it that our teachers are, are conversant with, uh, with our policies and that they are up to date. Oh, thank you. Maraming Safe salamat po. Secretary. Oh, yeah, papadala yun. Oh. 
Tayo po'y magpapatuloy. Salamat po sa mga kasagutan galing sa ating DepEd, sa DepEd executives sa paglilinaw sa mga tanong ni Ma'am Raswini Montaliana. Uh, pwede po natin siyang tawagin ulit. Baka nasa platform na po siya ulit. Ma'am Raswini? Feeling, feeling secure ako pag nandyan yung mga Yosek Asiko kasi sila ang nagsasabi. <laughs> Sa ibang opisina, ang, ang, ang sekretary ang nagsabi, tama ka. Pero maganda yung uh, estilo namin dito na sila kasi may memory. Sila tumutulong sa pag-craft ng policy at they know what is happening in the field. Kaya uh, sila ang tinatanong ko kung tama ba yung sinasabi ko o accurate ba yung sinasabi ko o hindi. Oo. Okay. Sorry for interrupting you, Dalia. <laughs> Sige po, pagpatuloy po natin. May follow-up question si Ma'am Raswini. Sabi pa niya, how safe for the teachers and the learners in using the classroom if it is used before as isolation facility for suspected and COVID positive in respective barangays when time comes to be used for limited face-to-face -face classes? Uh, una, uh, hindi ako doktor ha. Uh, alam ko may lifespan yung mga ano yan, yung mga viruses na yan. Hindi naman na forever and ever na diyan sila. Hindi naman sila eternal na uh, pag pagkakapit sa isang lugar. Pangalawa, uh, I have all I have also issued instructions na yung mga gagamitin na ating mga facilities to make sure uh, that is also a requirement of the Department of Health na uh, ready at malinis. Ang sabi ko nga, halimbawa, uh, ang local governments, ang DILG, humihingi ng permiso na gagamitin na vaccination center ang ating schools. So before this, dapat paghaloin. Yung vaccination center, hindi natin gamitin na classroom. O yung halimbawa, uh, mayroong mga barangay clinics na nasa loob ng, ng campus ng ating mga eskwelahan, eh, dapat hindi yan paghahaloin. And that is the responsibility, of course, of the head of the school, of the SDS, and also uh, the regional director who makes pasyal-pasyal sa mga schools na to assure na yung sinasabing ginagamit for isolation centers eh uh, gagamitin din for for classrooms make yun ang requirement talaga ng Department of Health make sure na yung protocols nila nasusunod and so kung todo linis yan kung todo ano make sure na may tubig kung todo na may gamot and ako mismo orally I've said time and again huwag haluin yung iba't ibang mga activities yung halimbawa vaccination centers huwag doon magkaroon uh, ng klase. Halimbawa, yung mga isolation centers, huwag din gamitin for whatever purposes. At saka yung mga clinics na nasa loob mismo ng campuses, kailangan uh, hiwalay yung entrance nila. Personally, I am not uh, encouraging the location of, of barangay clinics inside uh, our, our school facilities. Dahil nga, uh, Uh, we cannot be exposing our children, hindi lamang sa uh, COVID or sa uh, kung ano-anong variant yan, but kung ano-anong ibang sakit at saka kung ano-anong makikita ng mga bata kung dad magdadala ng pasyente. Kasi ginagawa in some schools uh, uh, ang eskwelahan na magiging barangay health center na sa loob mismo ng campus. Sabi ko, hiwalay ang entrance kailangan hindi makita ng mga bata yung mga dinadalang mga pasyente at hindi sila ma-expose. At saka, responsibility yan. Hindi responsibility ng Secretary of Education. But of the head of school, the school head and of the supervisor, the superintendent, and finally the regional director who represents the Secretary of Education in the region. Okay. Maraming salamat po. Secretary Liling, and over to you, Direct Nina. Thank you very much. And for our fifth question, magagaling po ito kay Daphne Santuyo ng Press ZS Media Club DXIRFM. And for this question, 
Babasahin na lang natin. Hello. Nandiyan po siya yata. I'm here. Ay. Yes, ma'am. I'm back. Yes. Okay. So, andito na po si Ma'am Daphne. Yes. Good afternoon po. You may ask your question. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, Secretary Briones. This is Daphne Santuyo, and I'm the president of Zamboanga Sibugay Media Club. And I'm also the news director of DXIO FM 94.3, your infinite radio. Uh, my question is, what are the plans of DepEd to address the negative effects of the expansion of limited face-to-face -face classes? And since we're allowed to ask two questions, I'll just uh, ask uh, directly the second question because it's just connected. Um, who will be held accountable if there will be a virus outbreak caused by the face-to-face -face classes? Thank you. Uh, as I was saying, uh, the pilot uh, study, uh, which covered fi over 15,000 learners, for a period of how many weeks, there was not a single, you know, there was not a single instance of an outbreak. Ang merong mga the usual sipon kasi uh, panahon ng, uh, ng ulan, kaya nga na-encourage kami that if we take the proper precautions and if we cooperate as closely as we can with the Department of Health and the, the ano, Department of Interior and local government, itong mga possibilities. And besides, ang nagpapasafe sa atin, yung which I explained to, to the gentleman from Isabela, hindi naman tayo papayag kung hindi mababa ang risk assessment. The risk, as you correctly pointed out, is always there. Life is a risk. Breathing is a risk. The thing is, how, how strong is the risk? How irresistible is the risk? How high is the risk? We will allow it only in low risk assessment uh, situations. So that possibility is, uh, of course, uh, uh, greatly uh, reduced. And that is what happened during our uh, during our, our our pilot. Kaya nga remember uh, NCR eh, isang katotak na ospital, doktor, lahat na eksperto nandiyan, lahat na negosyo, mayamang mayaman. Hindi namin pinayagan. They level 3 sila eh. Mas iba naman uh, they have all the facilities. Everybody goes to Manila if you have a serious health problem. Pero hindi kami pumapayag dahil sabi ni, sabi ni Department of Health, uh, kuy daw, ingat kayo dyan. At saka tinitingnan din yung capacity. Like halimbawa, mga bed capacities, etc. How many doctors do you have? Uh, very uh, extensive yung assessment ng health. Tapos, tapos tayo naman, mayroon tayong safety seal assessment tool na, na ginagamit. So we, we're trying to control, not really control, but to limit the risks. And, and we're very, very careful. The minute na magsabi si Department of Health, oy, train na yung lugar na pinayagan ninyo, uh, automatically we, 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 we stop it already. Tapos yung, yung tanong na uh, what will happen if there would be surges or, 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 or accidents. Uh, that's where the Department of Health comes in already. And that is where the IATF comes in already. They sila ang responsible dyan. But of course, we will always uh, cooperate. Dahil uh, ito mga bata natin. And we're very uh, interested uh, in this. Ang punto lang... We cannot deny, we cannot say guaranteed 100% risk-free. We always, pag makita mo sa media, ito risk-free ito, walang risk itong, ano, ito, itong, itong uh, financial instrument, you deposit in this bank, risk-free. In the end, totoo, there is always a risk. The thing is to limit and to make sure mababa yung risk. And we will only do uh, the face-to-face in uh, low-risk uh, 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 regions and in low-risk schools. So I hope I answered your question. Uh, thank you. Yes, Secretary, thank you so much for that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> thank you so much for the opportunity. Good afternoon. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Daphne. And yes, Ma'am Dalia, we can proceed with our next question. Hey, salamat, Ma'am Nina. Ang susunod po natin kumustahin ay si Sir Randy Kabasag ng DXFL 88.9 ng Sambuanga del Norte. Sir Randy? 
Ah, si Tata, na si Tata dia. Ah, Superintendent Triambolo, sir, sir Romy, paki off ng mic po. Okay, tawagin natin muli si Sir Randy Kabasag. Sir Randy, are you already around? Are you with us? Okay. Pabasahin ko na lang po muna habang papasok pa po si Sir Randy. Eventually, schools will again be open for face-to-face -face classes for all learners. Yet, there may be parents and learners who may opt for blended learning delivery modality having tried it to be also workable, convenient, and less expensive. Is DepEd giving consideration to multimodal learning delivery as part of its curriculum implementation when the country will be de declared COVID-free? How is the DepEd preparation of the learning infrastructure that fits to the possibility of multimodal learning delivery? Ah, right now we're into multi uh, ano, learning uh, delivery kasi ang ano natin ang, ang ang ating approach is blended learning uh, hindi lang natin na implement uh, immediately yung face to face component pero kasama ang face to face niyan so whatever works in a particular region or a particular school uh, we 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 implement it kung uh, alin ang ang effective no and again, uh, I would like to repeat what I said earlier. Uh, yung expectations natin na mag face to face eh, it will be like the face to face of old. Eh, it will not be like that because I'm not aware of any country na 100% face to face. Hindi mo maiiwasan that an educational system has to have both. Kailangan ng face to face for the. Uh, uh, socialization of the child and uh, the effectiveness of the learning process. Pero kailangan din ang online because when they go out into the world and work, nandyan si online. Many people are already working online. Kailangan sanay sila sa technology. So yung dalawa na yan, eh, hindi mo mapaghiwalay. So uh, uh, yung ating face-to-face, -face, mayroong online component at saka yung online component natin, mayroon ding face-to-face uh, -face component. Now, in other countries, uh, which we have been observing, particularly Southeast Asia, ay uh, yung sinasabi nating pinakamasikat, pinakamagaling na mga schools, ang nag-decide niyan is the Minister of Education, the minister all by himself. Kasi siya ang, ano, siya ang pinaka-boss chief dyan. And uh, uh, tayo, we are really doing everything to, to consult and to involve uh, uh, everybody in the process of education. Even as we say in the important ang face to face, we are also saying that important online and other modalities uh, of learning. Let me give you an example because you are in media. Uh, one of my friends who is in media is, was saying, she lives in Caloocan, and her child studies in a school, a very well-known school in, 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 uh, in, in Makati. Uh, kung mag-face-to-face -face yan, it, it will cost her a fortune to be able to send her child uh, to face-to-face to -face session. So happy siya sa, happy siya sa online dahil, dahil hindi siya masyadong ma- Gagastusan. I know some parents are already shifting to other uh, educational institutions dahil mayroong cost implications yung, uh, yung policy, ang choice between online and uh, ganun. Ang importante lang that we have to balance both. And at the same time, and I keep on repeating this, especially to our teachers, we should never forget that we are Filipinos. Okay, gusto nating magaling tayo sa online. Gusto nating magaling tayo sa face-to-face, -face, uh, sa pagharap ng teacher. Pero kailangan magaling din tayo na citizen. Magaling din tayo na Pilipino. Kabisado din natin yung ating history. Yan ay... Yung tatlo na yan, kailangang nasa ating educational uh, 
uh, system. And it's not easy because uh, uh, aching lang ang Department of Education. Siyempre, a lot of people want to give advice and to give comments, you know, and uh, uh, and uh, tell us also what what we should be doing, which is only uh, to be uh, uh, expected. But in other forms, in other uh, countries, which we so admire, uh, the decision making is, is very much faster because tinanong ko nga yung mga ibang bansa kung tinanong ba ang parents kung papayag sila ng face to face tinanong ba ang parents na papayag sila yung anak nila papasok sa school wala namang hindi naman ganun basta sinasabi lang na uh, ito mag face to face tayo ganito yung schedules natin uh, once a week pumunta kayo etc uh, ganito ang oras Pagkatapos ng oras na ano, uwi kayo. Tapos mga bata, sunod naman, uwi naman sila kaagad. Sabi ko, I'm not sure kung uh, uh, that will completely uh, uh, work uh, with us. So we have to find our own way. But the end all and the be all is to prepare our children to face the world when they go outside. And, and siguro, uh, you have noticed, we prepare our children to be doctors, to be engineers, to be scientists, to be teachers. But ang ating mga bata ngayon, paglabas nila, we don't even know what kinds of jobs are waiting for them. Tingnan mo yung mga definitions ng mga courses ngayon. Nag-fit in ba yan sa ating curriculum? Yung mga bagong mga jobs na lumalabas. Jobs which we don't even know exist because of the demands of technology, because the demands and changes in society. And the thing is we have to train our children to accept change. And that is also crucial. We try to do it blended. We try to do it uh, distance. We try to do it face to face. But dapat hindi natin yan kalimutan. Ay, ay ngayon, sabi natin, gusto natin mga bata magiging doktor. Malay mo, all that a patient will need is something on his wrist which will monitor everything, mag-analyze, mag-prescribe sa kanya. What, ano ng papel ng doktor? Ay, yung engineer, halimbawa, ano ng papel ng, 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 ng engineer? Anong class in jobs? Even in communications, they don't call... Noon, nung unang panahon, ang tawag ng mga people in communications ay public relations, di ba? Or they're called media people. Ngayon, mayroon na silang ibang mga terminologies na uh, ginagamit to describe new jobs. And that is what we have to ready our children for. And you cannot do it with only one methodology. And we cannot do it with only one version of what we think. It's the is 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 uh, the, the the truth. Kaya, uh, ano, um, I, I can share with you many of my observations. Education will not be the same as the education that we had, di ba? Ano nung klaseng mga jobs? Yung mga jobs na lumalabas, you've never heard of them, eh? At saka yung mga specializations like yung uh, Noon, eh, yung culinary arts, ang tawag natin yan ay home economics, na yung mga girls lang ang nag-aaral yan. But, but men e e e excel uh, in this already. Sa science, uh, having very exciting fields. So, uh, ihanda natin yan and we cannot do it by only one method. We cannot do it just by face-to-face. -face. There has to be a combination of approaches and that is the challenge to education at this time. Ano na yan? Para, ba, para naman ituro na may ultimo adios. <laughs> what education should be. Okay. Maraming salamat po, uh, Secretary Liling. So I think uh, this time... F feeling ako kagaya ng interviewer na nag-interview ng Presidencia Balls na nagbigay ng lecture. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dapat, uh, okay. okay, maraming salamat po ulit. Uh, back to Direct Nina. 
Thank you, Ma'am Dalia. Ngayon naman, tatawagin natin ang susunod na magtatanong, a representative from the Regional Federated SSG, ating SSG President, Chris Bautista. Nandito kaya, Chris Bautista na Regional Federated SSG. This is the student, ano? Yes, Paul Secretary. Oh, great. Oh, oh. I, I, I want to hear from them. I hope um, andito sila kasama natin sa ating platform. Chris Bautista. And habang inaantay siguro, I think Ma'am Dalia is trying to get in touch with, ano? Yes. Oo, habang inaantay natin, Secretary, I can read the first question. Anyway, dalawa naman yung nakasapit na questions. For the first question, it reads, What are the prepared programs of the central office for the SSG in the implementation of the face-to-face -face classes amidst the pandemic? Oh, very, very good question. Uh, all these uh, decades in education, um it great this is just my observation no hard feelings lang i have noticed that um we have always been uh for how many decades been concerned about our teachers which is just right uh our welfare and teachers etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh we, we have to give attention to our major clients who are the learners? Who are the students? And the question that is being raised is, is quite, uh, is really legitimate. And only recently, I appointed an assistant secretary, uh, CJ Verespicio, who is a, um, who has been a, a leading student uh, leader and, um, uh, in, um, in 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 the University of the Philippines, you finished law and so on and so forth, and uh, so for we we are going to to take a look or we are going to enrich the existing programs uh, which have been developed specifically for the students. Tama yung tanong, kasi uh, ang uh, Ang laki ng attention, and I think it is a correct ano naman na, we, we are always concerned about the welfare of our teachers or what should happen to our teachers. But at the same time, uh, ang bottom line natin is the provision, is maliwanag ang constitution, na is the provision of quality education for, for our learners. So, uh, now we have an assistant secretary who will be uh, uh, be very uh, involved and who will be working with the student organizations. So at least naman, as we are finishing our our, our term, because uh, there was a time kasi na, na, ano, na uh, I don't know how to describe the situation. Na, uh, in a sense, hindi na... Um, um, Yung youth formation division, not during my time, huh? uh, it was not uh, uh, youth formation division was not as active as as you would assume it would be. Uh oh, so it's only again during my time we are we are uh, endeavoring and we are working out programs. We are getting in touch with the SSGs and so on. Uh, Kasi at the end of the day, ang ano natin, yung mga estudyante, yung kanina sinabi ko, what are we preparing them for? We prepare them to accept change. By the time they go out, the world will be different from, from what they are used to. So by the time they go out, uh, as I said, uh, you, you assume you want to be a doctor, an engineer, or what. Pero ano yung mga jobs which are available? Yung mga descriptions na mga activities ngayon, ibang iba. And uh, we have to uh, help the children be aware of this, these uh, choices that, that they have to uh, uh, make. 
and uh, yung change isa ding issue na kung ano isang uh, connected and I'm glad uh, uh, tinanong ito ng ating mga estudyante we are very uh, interested in, in the matter of mental health I had a dialogue with the student government leaders uh, when I visited uh, region region 1 eh, ang, ang feedback ng mga student leaders at that time that uh, they want to know more about mental health how to cope with what they are facing which is very insecure which is very uncertain and it is very different from the world that we are used to tayo we, we, we live i don't know sa inyong panahon kay mga teachers but sa karamihan Pilipino, medyo secure you go to school, you take a degree, you become a lawyer, you become a doctor, and then you have a career, that's it. Pero ngayon, hindi na. You don't know what kind of jobs. Mag-train ka ng doctor. Anong papel ng doctor in the future? Anong papel ng engineer in the future? Anong papel ng, uh, as I said, ng technology? Oo. In the, in, the, in the future, tingnan ninyo yung listahan ng mga courses na ino-offer ngayon ng third-level institutions. Ang layo-layo sa nasanayan natin. And our learners have to be uh, 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 prepared and to be prepped for, for this uh, kind of world that they are entering, which is very different from our world. Kaya it's not enough to have blended it's not enough to have face to face so because it's not enough to have blended but it is not enough to have one approach to education uh, at at uh, to if we really want our children to be prepared and one of their interests is mental health so in relation to what are your plans we're going to start uh more uh, programs uh, on the matter of mental health. And we want to involve the students themselves. And secondly, yung mga uh, other uh, student programs. Uh, since I came in, uh, our, our Youth Formation Division has initiated many programs. Gusto natin eh, continue and eh, further uh, enrich. So prepare yung mga estudyante natin when they go out into the world to hopefully conquer the world and to you know set up uh, to blaze paths for for themselves and for their country Ayun. so what are our plans marami we have an assistant secretary now we are into we have a great interest in mental health we're going to set up a special program on mental health uh, we're going to uh, uh, to look at, uh, you know, uh, blended face-to-face. -face. And we're encouraging uh, the student governments, not only the student governments, but the students themselves to give us feedback on what uh, should be done. Uh, para naman magiging balance and we'll be responding to the constitutional requirement. Maraming salamat, Secretary. Speaking of involving the students, I hope nakapasok na sa ating Zoom meeting link si Chris Bautista, again, Regional Federated SSG President. Hi, Chris. Nakapasok ka na? Magtulod na ka? <laughs> Ayan. Or if not, dito na ba si Chris Bautista? Yan. Or andito ba ang ating teacher coach? Kasama ba natin? Baka on behalf of Chris and the whole SSSG, pwedeng siya po ang magtanong. I think direct yes. niya, the coach, uh, Sister Roy, Roy Bazar. Yes po. Sir, pwede niya yes. on behalf of our... Roy, SSG have I person. met you before? Kasi I have met a number of student leaders. Ang kita uh, na ba tayo? Wala pa ma'am. Negative pa po ma'am Leonor. Uh, uh, di po, teacher po. Uh, si, the fact that you call me Leonor means that we have not met because nobody yes, calls me Leonor. <laughs> they call me Liling. Yes, Wala po po ma'am Liling. Uh, actually yung, ako po yung advisor ni Chris Bautista, teacher advisor po. 
Ah, oh. Oo niya. Ang sumaya uh, to ron. <laughs> These are the questions of the uh, federated uh, regarding the we have two questions. Uh, the first one is what are the prepared programs from the central office regarding the SSG and the impl implementation of the face-to-face -face classes amidst this pan pandemic? Although it was being discussed, but uh, as to the student leaders, do they have that uh, activities? Uh, although we had already the crafting of the CBL last time, but uh, if we can make it possible, uh, the, uh, the SSG or the federation would like to ask if uh, within the region they can meet uh, along the way with the, the rest of the federated division federated officers, if that would be possible uh, with the DPED daw po. Oh, I will. I will. I uh, know. I will um, pass on your your concern and your request to uh, ASEC uh, JB Respicio. He just took his oath of office, and I'm sure he will be interested in 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 listening to you. The last time I had a dialogue with student leaders was in uh, in the north, which I visited, and uh, at that time. The student leaders expressed a very strong interest, uh, one in the curriculum and second, pasiguro, even uh, the issue of, you know, of, of mental health challenges for, for the students. And then nila inulit yung request for ano ba yon? academic freeze, etc. They know that they're already missing out on a lot of uh, many uh, developments as, as young people. And as you yourself know. Uh, yes, Paul. So, uh, uh, paki ano na lang through, nandito naman si Ruth, eh, ipasa na lang. So, I will uh, pass it on also to ASIC Rebs, uh, ASIC uh, JB. Uh -oh. Yes, Paul. Uh -oh. So, right now, ang focus namin is setting up this uh, mental health uh, program. They have a specific request yan ng mga uh, SSG's uh, leaders whom uh, I, I met from various uh, places uh, in the youth formation division. Okay. Yes, Paul. Uh -uh. Ang saan mo tayo, ikaduhan na yung tanong? The second one po is, what are the insights uh, as the Secretary of Education po regarding our youth leaders uh, participating the election rallies, uh, some of it of our student leaders from the different deep ed schools. So what would be, uh, is there any uh, sanctions or uh, what would be their uh, commotions regarding that uh, participation? Po? Uh, again, they... uh, this is where uh, I will want the, uh, no, the USEX and the ASICs also to, to participate and, and even our regional director because they, they know what is happening out there uh, in the field. No? And question mo yung participation and political rallies. Una, are they paid to participate in these political rallies? Are, are, yes, uh, we, we hear uh, uh, a lot of, of feedback about so-called scholarships na, uh, uh, which will be... Uh, which will be awarded after attendance at a particular uh, rally at saka yung anong mga incentives na, na ganon. And we would not want our, our learners, and, and you know that you are the advisor, na right from the beginning, kaumpisa-umpisa lang ng ating mga learners, tinuturuan na natin sila ng uh, usual uh, uh, political uh, exercises and practices. Kung gusto nating mag-participate sila in a positive manner, uh, pero yung uh, 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 tanungin nga natin because we we hear uh, uh, reports about such uh, uh, practices, uh, especially for for the uh, hindi masyado sa high school level but more sa tertiary level ang na nakita namin na ganong klaseng activity. Kung gagamitin sila, I mean, we would not encourage that. Of course, in the same manner that we don't encourage our teachers to participate uh, 
for whatever consideration in, in, in political uh, uh, activities. There are those who participate because they truly believe in what they are, uh, what, what their candidates are advocating. But uh, there are also those whom we hear uh, uh, might be uh, might might be participating uh, for other considerations. And ayaw natin yung mangyari. Mga, these are learners kung sa atin, eh, high school yan. And we're already teaching them uh, how uh, how how our present political system operates, then that would not be uh, good for the future of the hope of our fatherland or, or our motherland. <laughs> yeah. Yes, po. That is my immediate answer, but I don't know about uh, well, see, Yusek Alain, the Helang Youth Division for Mission is under him uh, right now, and uh, perhaps Yusek Dads can uh, uh, give his uh, addition. Huwag lang bilhin yung mga bata. And, Hello, uh, and, and, and that is the responsibility. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the prohibition actually when it comes to joining uh, political rallies are uh, on, the, uh, on the career service or on uh, government employees. Yes, that, that's very clear. Very, that a be, there's a very clear uh, guideline yes, that, that yeah. uh, our teachers, public school teachers, and uh, deped officials are barred from attending political rallies and partisan activities. As regards to students, uh, even student leaders joining political rallies and partisan uh, uh, events, uh, I think uh, they are not covered with that kind of prohibition. Uh, but of course, our teachers and our parents are enjoined to provide guidance to their children and to our students. But it's still, it is an exercise of a freedom of expression from uh, on the side of the student leaders. Uh, I think that's, that's my initial idea, ma'am. Uh, but uh, Yusek Rebchi perhaps can uh, uh, more or less uh, explain all the rudiments of the legal framework when it comes to this kind of uh, issue. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Direct Nina, pwedeng yes. anahin natin si Yusek Rebchi. If Yusek um, FC is still with us, yes, ma'am. Yusek FC. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon ulit. Uh, morning. Mahalaga ano, sa itang... Afternoon na, sir, ata. Afternoon. <laughs> oh. Ngayong hapon. Uh, uh, mahalaga sa isang lipunan o isang bayan na ang kabataan ay maging mapanuri, may matalas at uh, malalim na pagagap sa isyong panlipunan. So balit uh, yung particip pag uh, participate sa mga political rallies or political activities ay uh, kung ang ating ang ating mga learners ay below 18 dapat ay may uh, masusing paggabay ng magulang at ng guro at ang kanyang partisipasyon ay dapat voluntary hindi it, hindi dapat uh, uh, sa pamamagitan ng pag-uudyok ng isang sit ng isang individual na may uh, pampolitikang interes o kaya grupo ang uh, hinihikayat natin na ang ating kabataan ay maging uh, uh, mapanuri no sa mga isyong panlipunan at uh, magparticipate sila uh, voluntarily so balit kung sila ay below 18 dapat uh, mahalaga sabi sabi nga ni secretary at ni Yusek Alain yung guidance ng uh, kanilang magulang at ng guro. At yung mga uh, above 18 naman ay malaya silang mag-participate. So balit, uh, dapat muna nilang malaman at suriin kung uh, uh, ano ang tamang impormasyon at uh, ano ang uh, uh, wastong uh, kalaman batay sa, mga, batay sa kanilang pag-aaral at uh, pag-alam sa uh, isyong panlipunan. Yun lamang po. Oh, may, may bago akong assignment sa'yo, uh, yung say Krebs. Kasi we have to start with the teacher. Kasi ang teacher, teacher advisor, teacher coach, teacher teacher, uh, ang laki ng influence sa 
mga estudyante. Uh, there is a stage in a learner or young person's life what the teacher says is even more important than what the parents or what your religion uh, tells you or the faith or what society tells you. Uh, and, 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 and that has, uh, that happens quite often. Now, what is the, what is the law about teachers participating in political activities? Usually, pag, uh, from my own observation, kung magpa-participate, halimbawa, we're talking here about, about uh, our deaf children, no? these are uh, likely high school, they might be under 18, uh, anong papel ng teacher? But remember that the civil service and COMELEC has very clear uh, regulations on the participation of public employees, including, of course, including the teachers in political partisan activities. So doon magiging vulnerable ang, 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 ang teacher. Kung halimbawa, uh, 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 ano, uh, ang, ang Ano kasi yung participation in partisan political activities. And that might include convincing halimbawa. Mar maraming alam naman natin na ang dami-dami nagiging uh, uh, politically active uh, because of the influence of their teachers. Turo ni teacher yan. At saka maski anong sasabihin ng parents, talagang, talagang uh, uh, you reach a point when the, what the teacher says is more important. It is the teacher who is vulnerable to the regulations of civil service and the COMELEC. And this is why uh, I am uh, giving a special assignment to Yusek Revsi Siampinelico because he has compiled already all the, he has a compilation of all the regulations, COMELEC and civil service on the participation of public employees like teachers in partisan political activities. And ang gusto kong makita, hanapin niya kung mayroong prohibition against convincing, against organizing, diyan vulnerable ang teacher. Pag vulnerable ang teacher, then, then, uh, that, that becomes uh, an issue. Kasi sabi natin, this 17 year old, 18 year old, uh, ah, hindi naman sila, no. So we, we go to the teacher, the teacher advisor, the teacher coach, the teacher influencer who, 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 who shapes, uh, uh, men, I don't know if, of course, uh, some of you know that I, uh, uh, I, I, I am a former, uh, I, I led the life of an activist for many decades years of my life and it and uh, it was um, I'm well I'm a blame because I owe him so much it was my teacher and many of us many students who go into partisan political activities is due to the influence of their teacher if the provisions in the COMELEC and the civil service would include influencing, organizing, and even leading and accompanying, accompanying uh, uh, students. Kasi mga bata ito eh, lalo na sa atin. So ang akin lang ito, advice ko lang ito, is really directed towards our teachers. Kasi sila ang, ang, ano, ang uh, magiging object nitong uh, 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 Prohibition, no. As for the children, maliwanag yung sinabi niya ni Jose Kalin, ang ganda ng question na ito, eh, I, I like the question because uh, it's becoming more and more relevant as the election draws near. Uh, yung sinabi ni Alain, eh, kung below 18 yan, eh, parental guidance. At saka ang role ng teacher is crucial. Oo. Oo. I cannot, uh, right now, if, if you'll ask me, so generation ko, uh, yung uh, uh, those who, uh, know, who were very, very active as, as student leaders, uh, the, the, the influence of the teacher is very, very powerful. 
Now, you have the civil service and the COMELEC groups. If they're vulnerable to that, then uh, we have to remind our teachers na nandyan yan. And, and I would suggest twice na namin yan pinalabas. But then, uh, yun ang ano eh. We are not a reading uh, department. People do not read. They do not read circulars. They do not read memos. We do not read instructions. I'm not sure if uh, we have read for the second time na ano, ginawa ito ni Revsi. Yung compilation na ginawa mo, Revsi, about civil service and COMELEC prohibitions on political activity. Yun ang pag natin. Kasi uh, doon ang connect nila sa estudyante. And I'm glad na uh, renews yung question na yan because it is our duty to inform our teachers that this is uh, uh, connected to their role with, us, with the students. Any, any student, any advisor teacher knows how powerful an advisor is, whether it be for sports or for and, and partisan political activity, you go back to the teacher. Diba, Alin? Diba, Rebsi? Kung, ano, uh, kung may prohibition sa kanila, therefore, uh, we, we have to uh, advise them to be uh, more uh, uh, prudent and careful, uh, especially as as uh, the election draws near, and thank you for that question. It's uh, it's ngayon lang yan na raise, and I think uh, it's a very uh, uh, crucial and important question, which, like it or not, we have to face. What is the role of the advisor? What is the role of the coach? And and so on, but whether it be swimming or basketball or, or, or music or, or, or what? Have I answered your question? Yes, po, ma'am. Thank you, uh -huh. po, ma'am. Oh. And, and uh, because some of the concerns uh, was being raised regarding about the participation of the students, especially that the senior high schools is some of them are uh, approaching to 17 to 18 years old and uh, as we had experience also in the crafting of the CBL one of the RFSG SSG uh, from I think I don't know I could not remember the region uh, they are referring to the freedom of expression of the side of the students so that's why uh, in our end with the uh, RFSSG of region 9 we talk about this one regarding that freedom of expression, regarding the, uh, they talk that one as absolute freedom. But uh, on our side, we are very much proactive regarding to the deep ed mandates. So that's why we oh. raised the questions so that uh, it would be somehow to the authorities na magiging true to all uh, uh, teachers din po yung mga concerns oh. po namin ng RFS, oh. uh, RFSSD po. Uh, actually, one of the ano, I want to come national level ano siya, yung national federation na uh, was insisting on freedom of uh, freedom of expression. And when I yes. was in when I was in high school, my my story and I don't know if whether it was about Kesson or or or, or somebody na he got into a very strong argument. Tapos sinuntok siya. Tapos nagnos bleed na uh, broken yung kanyang ilong and then uh, sabi ng ang in defense the guy who hit him said that I'm only exercising my freedom tapos sabi sagot ni Keson you know your freedom ends where my nose begins kasi tinamaan yung kanyang ilong oh and when you you, you, you uh, and that student was very very fierce in in defending freedom of expression and of course we all know that there are limits to the freedom of expression for example uh, if students learners are taught for example to 
bring down government. That is that is illegal. So paano na yung freedom of expression mo diyan? Irali rally mo yan, ibagsak, ibagsak. And uh, ano patayin si ganito. Uh, etc. Tapos yung apo ng isang head ng ng isang educational uh, institution sabi pa ng apo niya sunugin si Briones. Oh. So uh, sa mga ganun na klaseng ano uh, um, uh, freedom of expression th- there are limits uh, limits to that. May, 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 may limit yan. So, uh, hindi naman na mas ka anong sasabihin mo na ano, and you, you call people names and uh, you tell them to go to hell. I have been told to go to hell. Uh, I don't know kung estudyante ba yun o, o, o hindi. But uh, uh, there are limits to, to such uh, activity. That's why you have anti-libel laws. That's why kailangan ma-regulate yung ganong klaseng mga active. Ano, uh, so, going back to your question, participation and political activities, let us look at the role of the advisor. Kasi this is where the Comelec and civil service rules are very clear. If there is any activity that the advisor engages in, which is contrary to Comelec and civil service rules, then that that advisor that teacher is is vulnerable now as for the 18 year old uh, uh, kids they have to be under parental uh, supervision including the, super, the the supervision of their teachers so vulnerable then and teacher uh, we cannot be arresting parents but we can also be disciplining teachers and thirdly what are we teaching our learners Anong tinuturo natin to, to plot revolution, to, to, to murder people, to engage in warfare, then that is illegal. You can express and express as much as you will, but to advocate, for example, yung tawag namin noon AS arm struggle, uh, that is a different matter. And we have had students going underground, and you know that also, uh, getting arrested. I come from a region where uh, 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 we have such uh, instances. Kasi ang next step dyan is going underground, same as in UP, oh, oh. or even in uh, uh, a province like Negros. So... Salamat sa tanong na yan. I, I think this is one significant, alam mo Ruth, this is a very significant and important question. And for once in a uh, uh, regional conference, ngayon ko lang na, narinig itong question na ito, which, which I think has to be faced and to be resolved. We may not have control over the students, but we have control and we have the the responsibility to discipline our teachers. Oh. So, ano, Revs, madali naman yun, eh, dahil nandiyan na yung mga materials mo, di ba? May listahan lang yun ng activities, eh. Mga one to three five yan ng mga, uh, ano, mga partisan political activities which are prohibited. And yes, that ma'am. is where our teachers will be vulnerable. Sige. Salamat. Salamat, sir. Can I get your name again? Sir, sir Roy po yan, um, uh, Secretary. Roy, paki-forward na lang yung ano mo, uh, paki-forward sa akin. By email is the fastest. So I can pass on your uh, re- the request of the student leaders to uh, yes, to ASEC the JV. Dumadami yes, na yung trabaho ni JB because right now he's very engaged with mental health. So <laughs> I actually already gave Asik JV a heads up. I was telling him we're in the press conference. So, 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 so. That's, that's anyway, good. Anyway, thank you very much, Sir Roy, for relaying the concerns. Yes, so, thank you for Mamiling. Thank you for Eric. Thank you. Salamat po. 
Sige. Thank you, Ma'am Dalia. Uh -oh. Thank you po din, Direk Nina. We will proceed. We'll back to uh, Pagadian City muna tayo. Ito, tatawagin natin si Ma'am Vanessa Cagas Tumakmol ng DXBZAM, Radio Bagting, and DXA Bell FM ng Pagadian City. Nasa platform ba siya ngayon? I think kanina I still, I saw her. If she's around, ma'am, please proceed. Oo. Ang sa ito yung ngalan niya? Ang sa ito Vanessa Gagas Tumakmol. <laughs> Vanessa, ang ganda naman. Vanessa Redgrave. <laughs> anyway po, yung unang katanungan niya ay babasahin ko po. Tungkol po sa special hardship allowance, ano-ano po ba ang konkretong batayan para sa makabenepisyon nito? Ah, uh, As far as I know, sana kung nandiyan pa si Yusek Ann, um, ma-share niya yung mga ano ng special definition ng special hardship allowance. Kasi uh, ang nagsiset up niyan is the Department of Budget and Management na, and then uh, in cooperation of course with the civil service tayo we implement. And then uh, also I noticed na Halimbawa, uh, we think of special hardship allowance generally na monthly or weekly. Pero yung special hardship, you, you suffer the special hardship during the time that you're having classes. But on weekends na walang klase, uh, yun, nagiging issue yan uh, in some schools kasi yung, uh, yung head, head ng school o yung ano eh, Uh, binibilang na bakit bibilangin babayaran mo yung Saturday and Sunday na wala namang pasok. Oo, so hindi ka nag undergo ng hardship. So ano yung definition ng special hardship? It's related, I believe, anong guess ko lang ito to communication system or yung status ng mga uh, transportation uh, or there is a, a security problem. Guess ko lang ito. So, uh, Mayroong ganun and it is the DBM which determines kung uh, how a person will qualify. Pero one one issue that I know uh, na pinag-debatehan uh, usually between the school head and the uh, commission, the SDS, is uh, yung number of days. Kasi people expect special hardship on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis. Pero they don't undergo the special hardship at the time when they are not in school or when they are at home. No? So, uh, yun lang ang binibilang. And alam ko kasi nakakaratingin sa akin, galit na galit yung mga teachers, bakit uh, uh, binibilangan sila ng ganun. But it's really DBM. Nandiyan ba si Yosek Ann? Pwede kayang ma- I'm here, ma'am. I'm here, ma'am. Can you hear me? Ah, yes. mo, Ann. Hello? How yes, special is special hardship? Yes, yeah, so this is hardship index na po ang tawag. Special hardship index. It replaces the old guideline. And this new hardship index is in partnership with the UNICEF. So it's not just DepEd who may be indexed. Kasama po natin ang mga consultants who identified the definition or uh, help us make the parameters of the hardship index. And there are eight major factors that affected po. Yung pong eight factors na ito ay number one, travel cost to the division office, travel time to the division office, poverty incidents, violence acts, no electricity, no water, no internet, and there are temporary learning spaces needed. So may mga weights po ito na inilagay at pagka na-compute po ito at 0.37 po yung index ay automatic na meron pong makukuha na special hardship uh, allowance yung ating mga teachers na papasok doon sa parameters na yon Sa all guidelines po, kailangan nila mag-apply. At nagkakaroon po ng subjectivity kasi meron lang po nag-grant ng uh, allowance, meron naman po hindi nag-grant. But with this index, ay automatic na na-list o na-enumerate yung mga eskwelahan 
na pumasok doon po sa level ng hardship na na-compute uh, using the eight factors that I mentioned. So this is actually a, an issue once of the Department of Budget and Management and the Department of Education. At iulitin ko po yung mga factors na consider dito ay travel cost, travel time, poverty incidence, violent acts, no electricity, no water, no internet access, and there are temporary learning spaces needed. At may mga weight po itong mga hardship uh, factors na ito at doon po papasok yung um, eligibility ng mga teachers natin. Now, this is relatively new, ma'am. And uh, we know that uh, it affected a lot of uh, other uh, teachers who benefited from this allowance before. And uh, our Bureau of uh, Human Resource and Organizational Development is doing the review and assessment. Uh, tingnan lang po natin kasi three years po yung nakalagay dito na ating pong obserbahan itong bagong formula na ito. And uh, isa po sa gusto natin talagang ma magkaroon ng uh, advantage or benefit from this new hardship index is the difficulty to apply and process, which now is not a requirement. It, it is now an automatic um, allowance and they don't need to submit uh, a lot of documents because we uh, consider these uh, factors that uh, we just enumerated. Walo po yun. Thank you po, ma'am. Now, which uh, this is a concrete ano, uh, issue of debate in one ano, in one province. Yung uh, gusto nilang bilangin yung weekend. Uh, gusto ng mga teachers na halimbawa ibilang yung weekend eh namang head ng school at saka yung supervisor eh ayaw. So, uh, paano yung pagbilang niyan? Do you make bilang-bilang uh, only the days where they are uh, being subjected to very special hardships or uh, yes, do it on a monthly basis? Or, yes. Uh, or, monthly po po siya. Monthly allowance. And it depends on the actual ano po, uh, physical duty of the teacher uh, to the school. So, affected din dito, ma'am, actually, yung kanilang alternative work arrangement. If they are uh, working at home, then there's no hardship uh, involved. So, only when they report physically, ay yung po yung magkakaroon dito ng, ano, ng uh, criteria or validation. Ang kailangan lang na document ngayon ay daily time record, ETR. Uh, which, which the head of school or the, uh, or the, the higher officials refuse to sign? Oo, kaya uh, nagiging uh, cost ng awa yan. Isa din is, halimbawa, sabihin mo, yung transportation, wala nang kal wala, walang kalsada, mahirap, uh, daming lubak-lubak, daming malaking bato, uh, and all that. Tapos, aba, itong, itong DBM, nagpa-build, build, build. So, I had this conversation nga with, with uh, DBM, no? Uh, Kung mag-put up na sila ng kalsada o mag-put up na ng internet, eh, mababawasan yung mga kriteria ng special hardship. And uh, so, malungkot yung mga teacher kung may kalsada, kung mayroon ng internet, kung may transport na, o kung may ilaw na. Kasi yung listahan ng mga kriteria for hardship, eh, nababawasan. Kaya binibiro ko nga si Ben noon, Ben, dahan-dahan ka na mga build, build, build mo dyan. Dahil pag mag-build, build, build ka ng kalsada, hindi na maka-hardship yung uh, ibang nag expect ng special hardship. Itapos, ang sagot naman niya, Liling, saan ba ako lulugar nito? Oo, sabi niya na uh, kailangan naman na mag-build ng facilities. So, so nagiging... Uh, source of uh, uh, ill feelings ito. Kasi pag gaganda na yung kalsada, eh, di minus one category ka na dyan. Pag mayroon ng internet, oh, di minus one, ano na naman. Uh, mababawasan na naman yung criteria na for, for the special hardship. It's not going to be very hard anymore. Uh, so, uh, Nagkaroon ng, uh, I don't know how, how you, you would dis, dis, describe this kind of uh, uh, situation. Pero tama ka, mahirap i-implement talaga yung special hardship eh. 
uh, in terms of contrasting development objectives vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, recognizing the sacrifices and the difficulties of uh, our teachers, for example, in the uh, in the department. Oh, mayroon ba dong ano, matters of national security, uh, Yusuf An? Kasama ba sa criteria, An? Hindi na rin ni An. Kasi kung kasama yung security, eh, mayroon, mayroon tayong teacher na sa bundok na uh, kung on moonlight nights na mamasyal yung ano uh, uh, mga uh, 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 how do i describe them yung mga tao nang haharana nakiki discussion etc kasama ba yan sa special hardship na ng mga uh, different uh, uh, types of, 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 of people with different ideologies um uh, ano mo ba yan as a, a, a special hardship uh, in itself uh -oh. but anyway uh what we are agreed on right now is that it is a little difficult to implement pero ang end all and be all dito of course is the dbm kasi sa kanila yung mga guidelines uh Nayan, uh, oh. Bakana ano po si Yusek An from the call secretary, but on the guidelines of Sha, kasama po yung occurrence of violent acts within the school or immediate surroundings. Oh, kasi we, we really have instances like uh, like that, uh, like uh, kasi sometimes we have practices alam. I don't know if it is true in your region, but uh, in other regions, you have. May mga practices where the teacher lives or occupies one of the classrooms, di ba? Rather than go home every week and doon sila nakatera. And so, uh, I suppose, uh, depending on on how nice the, 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 ano, the midnight visitors are or how good looking they are or how nice their singing voice is. But... Uh, uh, uh that there is that kind of, of risk and that 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 has happened uh, uh a number of times i know of real stories like that oh. in places na ano uh, supposedly dominated by particular groups tapos magpa social sila magpa magpabayle, magpadance, tapos iimbitahin yung teacher. Ano ba yun? Special hardship ba yun? To be dancing away and drinking away with uh, uh, groups whose uh, objectives are different from ours. <laughs> Siguro, uh, anyway, let DBM, uh, my answer, sino nga yung nag-raise ng question? My answer is that uh, it should be DBM who will make the final decision because the guidelines come from them. We can express our, our opinions on what constitutes a special risk. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the final uh, determination, as, as always, is, would be by the DBM itself and perhaps even civil service. Si sila ang nag-setup ng criteria dyan eh. Sige, sunod. Okay, thank you po very much sa atin pong secretary, si Ma'am Liling, sa sagot po ng oh, katanungan ni Ma'am. For every Ma question you raise, I, I know specific stories because I, 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 I hear a lot of stories from various parts of the country. Oh, oh. Sige. Thank you, Ma'am Liling. Back to you, Direct Nina. Thank you very much, Ma'am Dalia. And to proceed with our next set of questions naman, no? after the special hardship allowance question, dito naman po tayo sa susunod na katanungan mula kay Sir Arnold Flores ng WOW PHTV Sambuanga del Sur. 
Andito po ba si Sir? Kung wala na si Sir Arnold, okay, wala Basahin. na ata sa... Oo. If wala na sa call, babasahin na lang po natin ang kanyang question. For the first question, two years na ang nakalipas mula ng magkaroon tayo ng pandemia. Mag two years na rin ang mga estudyante natin na nag-module at nag-online class. This year, pag magkaroon tayo ng face-to-face -face classes, ang mga elementarya magiging high school na, ang high school magiging senior high na rin. Higit sa lahat, ang senior high magiging college na. Ang tanong ko, sa tingin niyo ba handa na ang mga estudyante natin sa next level ng pag-aaral nila considering the new environment? Secretary? Would you want to respond to this question? Ayan. So basically po, parang handa na ba ang ating mga students to move up with our blended learning modalities? Nangyayari na yun, nakapag-graduate naman tayo. Nakapagpatapos naman tayo, even sa ALS. Hindi yung handa ba tayo? Kasi ginagawa na natin yun eh. Immediately after, within five months, nag, ano naman tayo, nag... Um, learning continuity uh, program. So, um, hindi natin sabihing handa na ba tayo kasi uh, handa naman talaga tayo para tayo mga boy scout at girl scout na uh, laging uh, handa under the circumstances. Hindi natin masasabing we are putting out inferior education. We cannot say that unless we, we really uh, uh, make an assessment Like for example, may mga bata talaga, like it or not, ano, we are all very, ano, very obsessed with face-to-face. -face. But there are children who are doing very well on their online. Kasi they can meet their friends outside in other circumstances. And then pag school na online, eh, less costly for the parents. Uh, at saka mayroon talagang uh, mga estudyante who, who, who do... Uh, Well, so to ask whether we are handa, eh, ginawa na natin yan. We did what, what we could under the circumstances. And uh, it is not for us to say kung um, successful ba o, o hindi. Nakapag-graduate naman tayo, nakapagpatapos naman tayo. Ako, I have attended so many arts graduations na yung pumasa naman yung mga estudyante sa mga tests ng TESDA. So, um, mahirap nating sabihin na hindi tayo handa. Kasi palagi tayong handa. At ina-anticipate natin yan, even if we know that it is difficult. Kasi otherwise, give up na tayo. And we are not used to giving up. Okay. Sino pang sunod na question? Ayan, thank you very much for that response, Secretary. Ma'am Dalia, meron pa ba tayong mga questions? Yes, direct niya. Ito po ay babasahin ko na lang po kasi ang, ang sabi ni Ma'am uh, Ami Duyag Pakarat ng Radio Bisdak Pagadian City na abangan na lang po niya tayo sa DepEd Philippines po at pakibasa na lang according to her. So ito po yung tinanong niya sa atin, sa mga hindi pa po nakapag-take ng EPT exam, magkakaroon pa po ba ng second batch or hihintay na lang nila ang next ranking? At may follow-up po siya na related po sa LET examination this year. Sa dami daw ng mga hindi pa nakapag-file, posible po bang magkaroon ng limit para sa mga applicants? Ayan po. Um, that's a very practical question. Siguro si Yusik Dads makatulong sa pagsagot niyan. Kasi um, nasa kanila yung assessment and all that. Oh, that's... Magandang hapon po ulit. Magandang hapon po ulit sa lahat. Uh, totoo po yan na uh, yung pong test natin para sa mga teacher applicants, uh, binibigay naman po pagka nag-request yung mga division offices. So, uh, madidetermine naman po ang pangangailangan ng mga division offices ang ayon sa mga Uh, nagmamanifest pa ng interest na mag-apply. Yun naman pong sa LLET, 
Uh, PRC po ang namamahala pero tayo naman po ay nakikipag-ugnayan. Ang ulat po sa huling pagpupulong ng Teacher Education Council, uh, ano pa po, uh, kumbaga hindi pa kulang ang mga applicants ng DepEd. Uh, ang kanilang mga licensed teachers na available ay sobra pa sa pangangailangan po ng kagawaran ng edukasyon. Pero siyempre po gusto rin nating bigyan ng pagkakataon yung mga nagsipagtapos pa lamang na magkaroon na rin ng license. So mag-aantay po tayo sa mga uh, susunod na ipapagbigay alam sa atin ng uh, PRC kung mag bibigay pa sila ng karagdagang uh, examin uh, examination ngayong taon. Salamat po. Maraming salamat po, Yusek Dads. Back to you, Direct Nina. All right, and I think we're down to our last few questions. Kung hindi man last question ito, Ma'am Dalia, no? Um, yes, yes. Let's try to call in Ma'am Jane Taburda Malindang ng Broadcasting Network Corporation Pagadian City. Dito pa ba si Ma'am Jane Malindang? Okay, um, basahin na lang po natin ang kanyang question. Uh, eto, kadalasan na obserbahan namin na ang sumasagot sa mga module ngayon ay ang mga parents. Sila pa ang nagsusulat mismo at ito ay hindi magandang ehemplo kasi mawawala ng gana ang mga bata mag-aral. Ano ba ang inyong masasabi sa mga magulang ngayong nakikinig sa ating presscon? Magandang question yan dahil lumang ano yan, lumang issue yan. Wala pa ang pandemic, wala pa yung mga sinasabing problema sa edukasyon. Uh, lumilitaw na yon na yung practice na halimbawa na sinasabi na ang parents o ang lola and what's worse kung minsan ang yaya. Hindi naman kaysa pag maliit natin sa mga yaya pero... Um, Depende who is available, yun ang tumutulong or else my tutor. And uh, this creates um, uh, equity problems kasi yung maka-afford ng tutor, uh, usually ang tutor teacher din, di ba? Uh, mas, mas ano sila, mas uh, may advantage. no? So um, itong um, issue na ito is addressed to the parents. And that is where yung kanina renace yung issue na about about uh, young learners uh, participating in political exercises. Na gusto nating maturuan sila ng honesty. Gusto natin na uh, maturuan sila ng mga bagong pamamaraan sa pagkilos. Hindi yung mga traditional na activities associated with trend policy or traditional uh, politics. So ganun din. Matagal na issue na 'yan na ang ang ano ang ang mother ang gagawa, ang lola ang gagawa, ang yaya ang gagawa o ang ano ang ah, ah, kuminsan na sinasabi ko may mga schools pa nga na mayroon silang mayroon silang nanay academy which is okay 'yon. Tapos mayroon din silang mga mayroon din ng school na alam ko na at tinitrain nila talaga yung mga yaya kasi alam naman nila na ang nag ano, sa bata talaga sa bata, mga bata uh, sa ilang mga bata sa ilang pamilya eh yung mga yaya so might as well papag-aralin na rin nila yung yaya para tama naman yung ituturo sa uh, sa bata so uh, kasama ito sa kultura sa ano sa edukasyon no na existing na kaya We have to do everything at tuturuan natin na uh, yung sinasabi natin good manners and right conduct. Tuturuan natin yung mga bata natin, the value of honesty. Uh, palaging sinasabi natin ang motto ng DepEd ay honesty is the best policy. Uh, uh, and uh, we have to walk the talk uh, in, on, on, on this uh, matter. We know it is practice. Teachers... Uh, hindi lang yung nanay, sino nga yung nagtanong ngayon. Hindi, yung, hindi lang na ang yaya o ang lolang sumasagot. Ang teacher na tutor ang sumasagot. Kasi magkaibigan sila nung yung teacher ng subject na yan. Oo. And, and even at tertiary level, uh, ginagawa yan. So, it's not uh, it only a depth challenge. It's a challenge to society itself. 
paano mo ma-introduce yung ano notion of, of being honest and telling the truth o yung sinasabi sa good book na ano seek the truth and the truth will make you free pero ang sinasabi natin seek the truth but you have to pay for it so uh, yun ang uh, nakikita akong uh, challenge hindi lamang sa education kundi sa buong society na nasasanay na sa pandaraya bahagi lang yan sa mga practices ng pandaraya na tinotolerate sa ating lipunan and which is the responsibility not only of the department but also of all members of, of society uh, itself. No? Ang importante lang, pwede ka namang mandaya, huwag ka lang magpahuli. Talagang tanga ka kung mahuhuli ka. So, uh, ayun. But Teachers also have a way. They, they know when it is done by the mother or the ayah or the lola or, or the uh, whoever or by the tutor. Alam naman nila yan. The teachers can tell. Lalo na yung matagal na talaga ang experience. So, mahalata naman nila kung trabaho ba yan ng, ano, ng bata o trabaho ba yan ng ina o yung, yung ina na PhD. O trabaho ba yan ng bata na grade 4? Malalaman naman nila yon Pero pag itolerate nila yon dahil binigyan sila ng Christmas gift o birthday gift ng uh, magulang, then that's a different matter altogether also. So, uh, yun ang sagot ko. It's a, a challenge we have to face frontally. Thank you, Secretary, for that response. And now we're down to our last question for this press conference. Um, the last question is, ano po ang plano sa Department of Education tungkol sa salary increase ng mga guro? Secretary, you can provide your response and then we can also ask you, Sek Ann, to um, supplement your answer po. On the matter of salary increase, alam naman natin na ilang milyon ang empleyado ng gobyerno. Pag mag-increase ka ng salaries ng teacher, isipin mo naman yung those with equivalent qualifications. Hindi lang sa mga teachers natin, but sa iba din mga profesyon. Yun ang trabaho ng ating mga regulatory agencies like the DBM and the civil service. Siyempre, gusto nating mag-increase ang salary ng ating teachers what we have done is try to create additional positions para hindi lang ma, ma stack up ang teacher hanggang level 3 at there will be there will be level 4 5 6 or yung level ng master teacher dagdagan natin yan para hindi naman sila mas stack up at maghihintay kung kailan magre-retire yung nasa taas sa kanila kaya pag mag-isip tayo ng pag-increase ng sweldo ng teacher, isipin natin yung pag-increase ng sweldo ng lahat na nagsisilbi, ng lahat na nasa pamahalaan. Alam ko nagagalit yung iba kung magsasalita ako ng ganun. Uh, uh, alam ko na ang thinking natin uh, na tayo lang ang dapat i-increase ng sweldo. Pero uh, ganun ang pananagutan ng ating pamahalaan. And right now, alam naman natin na, na hindi naman umaapaw ang pera ng pamahalaan at this time. Down ng economy, uh, we, we all know that uh, very well. And um, at the same time, uh, um, nag-i-increase naman ang expenditures ng government. So, uh, yung pag-increase ng salary... I think uh, you have studied economics 11 na kung mag-increase ka ng salary ng teacher halimbawa ng 1,000 or 2,000 or 5,000 a month pero hindi mag-grow yung economy you're only creating inflation tataas lang yung sinabi ko na yan oh, nagagalit ang mga teacher nung no? sinabi ko yan ng experience ko sa isang private university kung saan ako ay chairman na Ang ginawa namin, uh, ang contributions sa uh, 
sa ano ng kanilang retirement plan, binigay na namin diretso sa mga teachers yung naipon nila. So mayroong nakatanggap ng by six figures. Ay itong university na ito is located in a very small city. As a result, sus, tumaas ang refrigerator, tumataas ang motorsiklo, tumaas ang mga trip sa Boracay. Uh, lahat nagiging inflationary. And the entire city suffered na hindi naman sila nakatanggap ng extra na pera, pero nadamay sila sa, sa inflation. Kaya pinag-aaralan ng gusto, pag mag-raise ka ng salary, isip, niisip ng ating mga planners, anong epekto nito sa economy? Kung ang economy natin ay umuusbong, lumalaki, makayanan ang pagtaas ng sweldo. Pero kung magpataas lang tayo ng sweldo, magbigay lang tayo ng pera, pero ang bibilhin sa pera na yan, ang sabon, ang bigas, lahat-lahat uh, mga dilata, ay ganun pa rin ang quantity na napoproduce, eh, magiging inflationary yan. So, yung mga bagay na yan, tinitimbang-timbang, hindi naman kaysa dinidepensa ko ang gobyerno. It's not enough to just say you will give you an increase of, of 1,000 or 5,000 or, or, or 10,000 um, a, a, a month. What will you be able to buy with your 10,000 if your economy is down? So, uh, yung mga bagay, binabalansin ng ating mga uh, monetary and policy makers. Yun na ang gusto kong sabihin. I'm, I'm not against uh, who does not want to have an increase in salary. The cabinet members don't have an increase in salary either. Nag Naghihirap din kami. So, okay yan. But, bantayan din ninyo ang prices. Yung example na sinasabi ko sa isang maliit na siyudad, binigay ang retirement pay sa 300 ka-teacher na uh, faculty members. Ito, maas yung presyo ng halos lahat na bilihin sa siyudad na yan dahil alam ng mga negosyante na may pera yung mga taong ito. Kung walang equivalent increase in productivity, then... Uh, you might have uh, 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 inflationary uh, problems and uh, bali wala yung pag-increase. Kaya nga sabi nila, ay nako, bibigyan ka lang ng 500, bibigyan ka lang ng 1,000. Gasino yan, gusto ko 10,000. You are assuming that you can buy 10,000 worth of new goods. ba? Diba? Gusto ko, bigyan ako ng 10,000. Okay, bigyan ka ng 10,000. Anong mabili mo sa 10,000 mo kung hindi umaasenso yung economy? Magkaroon ka lang ng increase in prices. So, um, yun, binabalanse. Hindi ako kasama sa economic team, pero yun lang ang gusto kong i-share sa inyo kung paano nagde-decide ang pamahalaan uh, hinggil sa matter of salaries. Hindi lamang sa teacher, pero sa lahat na uh, empleyado ng ng gobyerno. Okay. Thank you secretary. We also have Yusek Analyst. Director Nina. Yes, oh, yes ma'am. Thank you po. Uh, the salary standardization law is a policy po ng oversight agencies natin as uh, explained uh, very much explained by my professor in public finance DOF po, DBM Civil Service Commission kasi ang pag po ng salary ng isang profession ay meron pong implikasyon sa salary ng ibang mga uh, profession din. No? So, hindi lang po sa gobyerno, hindi lang po mga teachers yung ating pong minamanage but all of the uh, professionals in the bureaucracy. But DepEd is following or compliant with the salary standardization law. Meron po tayo taon-taon na increase ng sweldo. Nagsimula po noong 2020 yung pong ating in-implement in ngayon. In Fact, ngayong 2022, mayroon po salary increase. 
na ang lahat po ng gobyerno hanggang 2023 po ay may salary increase po an ano ka blurred ka <laughs> ang lahat ng mga nagtatrabaho you said an medyo choppy po yung line so yung susunod po na kongreso at senado ay hindi na pro Yan, medyo, I think Yusik Ann was having trouble with the internet connection po, ano, pero salary standardization law ang sagot. So, at na-explain naman ni Secretary kung ano yung mag, nagiging considerations nung ano natin, salary standardization law. Kaya, ayun, if ever naman po, um, we can still provide uh, responses pwede through Viber or email na lang po siguro with course it through Mamdalia. Ayan, and sorry may pahabol. Kanina sabi ko last question na. Pero Secretary, meron pa pong last. Um, if we have Sir Charles Perolino with us from DXVDFM Dapitan. Charles Perolino po. Dito Hello, po good afternoon. Ayan, yes. Good afternoon, ma'am. Um, this is Ivy Josefa B. Perolino in behalf of Mr. Charles. Uh, representing from the XVD 101.3 FM. My question is, since limited face-to-face -face classes are already allowed, is there a possibility in person graduation or end of school year rights this coming June or July? Um, excellent question. Uh, nandito din si Yusek Dads. No? Magandang tanong yan. Dahil mm. pag mag-usap ka ng klase, o begin, o, o, opening of the school year, Next thing na itatanong mo is graduation, of course. And the parents are are quite uh, excited about graduation. Sometimes they're even more excited than the children. Uh, children also are excited, but mas excited ang, ang, ang parents usually. So kung, kung magano na tayo, progressive expansion, so that would mean, ang signal dyan is that... Uh, uh, yung risk assessment natin sa mga different regions, sa mga different schools, uh, is already so much better. Nag-improve na ng gusto. At saka kung nag-improve na yan ng gusto, the chances, of course, of face-to-face uh, -face graduation also increases. Chances of uh, level 2 assessments will also be increasing. So, uh, um, sumusunod yan eh. Pag mag-opening ka ng classes, mag-face-to-face -face ka, eh, nandiyan si graduation. And ang hope lang natin, ang dasal natin na maabutan ng graduation season uh, itong um, pag-face-to-face -face natin na hindi naman maabutan ng um, hindi magandang balita kung biglang may pagbabago. Baka si, ano, si dad si gusto magdagdag niyan. Um, Pero yun ang tingin ko. Magandang hapon ulit. Magkabuntot. Ganun. Yeah. Magandang hapon po ulit uh, sa lahat. Uh, kami po sa Curriculum and Instruction Strand ay nag-uusap na ng magiging uh, mga guidelines. Yung tanong po, posible, siyempre po. Kasi pinayagan nga ang limited face-to-face. -face. Ang ibig sabihin ay pwede rin yung limited face-to-face uh, -face na graduation ceremonies. Huwag pong umasa na katulad ng dati na napakaraming tao. Yeah, i-regulate po natin, susundin natin yung mga uh, social distancing requirements. May posibilidad po na hindi lang isahan, baka uh, may unang oras, uh, isang grupo kung maliit yung lugar na pagdarausan ng face-to-face -face, uh, graduation. Ay mga ganun pong mga modelo ay pinag-uura pinag-aaralan pa po namin at pinag-uusapan. Pero po, sisiguruhin natin kung, na kung tayo ay magre-recommend nito, ito po ay sasang-ayon sa mga uh, pinapatupad na requirements ng IATF ng, at ng Department of Health. Maraming salamat po. 
Mm, Thank you, Yusek Dad. Secretary Yusek Ann is back on the yes. call. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, oh, oh, ma'am. May mga guro po akong nakausap dito sa Tarlac National High School, Binigno Aquino National High School, Cristo Rey High School, at Santa Lucia High School. Uh -huh. Nandito po kasi ako sa Tarlac at may mga guro pong lumapit sa atin. Nagpapakamusta sa inyo. At uh, very much related po yung tanong kanina on salary increase. Gusto ko pong ituloy kasi napakaganda po ng kwento na yon. Ang sabi ko po ay... Uh, ang pagtaas ng sahod ay naaayon sa merit and promotion. Merit and promotion, kung meron pong dagdag na qualification in your uh, education, on your experience, on your training, ay may dagdag po mga posisyon. Malapit na po, intayin na po natin at uh, ginagawa na po nila USEC NEPO, USEC MILI, of course, si Ma'am Liling po ang nagpagawa nito. Additional teaching position. So kung kayo po ay nasa teacher tree, Pwede po kayo ma-promote sa teacher 4, 5, 6, and 7. At yun po yung increase ng salary na talaga naman po napakasarap na matanggap. Kasi yun ay dagdag na sahod dun sa mga uh, qualified and deserving. Yun po ang tawag natin ay career progression. At uh, yun po yung talagang salary increase na hindi po magkakaroon ng uh, implication sa ibang mga uh, nasa posisyon. Uh, whether it's same teachers at sa iba po mga profesyon na nagtatrabaho rin sa probyerno. So yun po yung sagot na maganda, na good news na ating pong bibigay at uh, malapit na po ito dahil mismo ang ating uh, presidente, ating pangulo as recommended by our secretary will be uh, uh, soon giving this good news to all of us. Marami pong salamat. Yeah. Pero huwag lang kalimutan yung sinabi ko na mas makatanggap ka halimbawa ng, ng promotion o makatanggap ka ng mas mataas na sweldo, isipin mo yung estado ng ekonomiya. Kasi madaling magsabi na kailangan ko 10,000 across the board. Lahat na learners bigyan ng 30,000. Lahat na teachers halimbawa bigyan ng 20,000. Kung Bigyan tayo lahat ng 10,000 at 20,000. Anong mabili natin doon sa 10,000 at 20,000? Kung ang ekonomi ay hindi gumagalaw. Kaya magkaroon lang tayo ng uh, inflation. Tataas lang yung presyo ng bilihin. At saka yung hindi nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno, madadamay. Mapasama sila kasi they will be affected. Ito, concrete situation itong sinabi ko. Chairman ako ng isang maliit na universidad sa aking probinsya. Nagbigay kami ng um, retirement. Ano, binigay namin diretso kasi we thought na kailangan, kailangan ng aming mga teach faculty yung pera nila. Pero tumaas naman ang ano. Nako, everybody was very happy in the university. But the rest of the community, they were not happy. Kasi nadamay sila sa pagtaas ng mga refrigerator, sa mga kung ano-ano mga gadgets at saka yung mga bakasyon. Uh, enjoy na enjoy ang taga-siliman. Ito yung university na ito. Pero ang, ang siyudad, uh, kasama sila sa pagtaas ng presyo. Unless your economy grows. Yun, yun, yun lang ang punto ko. And... Uh, So wag kayong magulat kasi yun din ang sama ng loob. Eh ano mabili mo ng 10,000, ganito lang mabili mo ng 10,000. Then tumaas ang presyo eh. Tataas ang presyo ng lahat na bagay. Oo. Kaya kung minsan eh, iniisip ng iba, gusto ba nilang tataas yung presyo which is better, an increase in prices or an increase in a salary? Maganda yung salary kasi may may honor ka ganito na sweldo mo. Pero anong mabili mo doon? Kung hindi natin tulungan ang ekonomiya, yun, yun lang. But uh, okay ang bibigyan tayo ng increase para makasama naman ang mga cabinet members na uh, hindi naman din in-increasean yung sweldo. <laughs> Ayun. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Yusek Ann. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Dalia. Yes, muchísimas gracias. Dagan kaing salamat, Secretary Lenore Magtolis Briones. 
na nakapanayam natin ngayong araw at sa iba pa nating opisyal ng DepEd na sa araw na ito tayo ay nakapagbigay ng tamang impormasyon sa ating mga media partners at sa lahat po na nakaantabay sa ating official Facebook pages. Sa mga nakikinig sa mga radyo at mga cable channels na sigurado namang makapagbigay linaw sa mga katanungan ng media, ng ating mga magulang at ng publiko. Muli, Mahalaga maraming, maraming dahil na malaman ng teachers. Yes po, ma'am. Kasi yun ang napansin ko. Hindi nakaka-reach sa kan. I'm not referring to this region, but I'm referring to to other regions na may mga tanong sila, may mga issues na uh, long settled na pero obviously mm-hmm. hindi nila alam ang nangyayari kaya uh, kailangan talagang malaman din ng teachers kung anong nangyayari sa kanilang departamento. Magagalit na naman ang teacher niya. Sabihin, oh, ignorante ba kami? Oh, chuchu, chuchu. But uh, the fact is, uh, yung nakakarating sa akin, nagmumura sa akin, wala namang mga issues na uh, 19 purgate na na-resolve na, na, na pero uh, uh, sa palagay nila, nandyan pa rin. Kaya uh, mabuti yung uh, i-encourage natin ang ating teachers na Siguro magpa-contest tayo ng ano. <laughs> <laughs> ng policies or, 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 or what. Oo, sige. Maraming salamat po. Okay. Go ahead po, RD. Ang lilig visit us, ang hidere. Pagi, basta ako anak na natugta na may kayo. We're, we're still in a bubble as, as, as you know. Pwede And, naman uh, ang face-to-face. <laughs> oh, lagi, face-to-face. Virtual con- ano na oh, you, you, you cannot eat this salted lechon, ano, uh, virtually eh. <laughs> Imaginin yeah, mo lang yun. Oh, unforgettable <laughs> sa akin. And the seafood, of course. We'll, we'll host again another, oh, ano? We'll host again another press con. We'll host another <laughs> press con, but you will be here uh, face-to-face. Oo nga, mag-fest-to-fest. Fest. Fest. Oh, and then, the, and the board board. Asa ba itong board board gikan? The pitan o pagadian? No, Osamis to. Ah, Osamis, pekas na ito. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Na-order to siya, ma'am. Oo, oh, oo, oh, oo. Oh. Okay, so salamat. Thank salamat sa lahat. Thank salamat sa hosts. Salamat, Kung salamat, Ma'am Liling. Kung sa tanan nga naging parte po ng ating press con ngayong hapon na ito. Thank you, Director Nina. Thank you, Sik. Salamat. Inabot tayo okay, back to you, John and Iris. Daghan nga questions kay diabot ng tag-alas stress. <laughs> Oo. Ayun na nga. Maraming so, salamat. Daghang salamat, Secretary Liling. Student, student participation in politics. That's that, that, yes. that for me is something which has not been raised Uh, except when I met with the student leaders, doon na raise yung issue na yan, but not in the uh, in a press con. So, press con. Yes. Uh-huh. so maganda yung uh, lumitaw yung bagay na yan, especially at this time. Nabigyan ko tuloy ng assignment si Rebsi. <laughs> <laughs> Pero madali lang yun sa kanya dahil ano, eh, may compilation siya talaga. And we have to warn our teachers. Kasi akala, sabihin natin, oh, wala lang pakialam kayo sa mga estudyante. Pero sino ang nagturo sa mga estudyante? Sino ang nagdala sa kanila? Sino ang nag-organize sa kanila? Sino ang nag-roll call, roll call? Pagdating doon sa, ano, sa mga places na ano para mag-report na present etc para bibigyan ng t-shirt bibigyan ng kung ano-ano oo so uh, very uh, crucial ano po ba yun parang dalawang issues na bago ditong lumitaw which i think are very important oo sige salamat okay. <clears throat> paano na mag Hoy, congratulations pala to the cultural group. That was really nice. I like it. Ito yan. That's from uh, the Division of Pagadian City. Oo. Uh, another approach to the ano, single variation. 
Yes, oh, ma'am. Melengas. Singkil with the Subanen vibe. Huh. Ah, Subanan. Oo. Subanan. Very active ang ating uh, IP education dito, ma'am Lili. Uh-huh. Itong shirt ko mukhang Subanan na ito eh. Pero nine, can you believe it? 1970s pa ito sa Kowa. Oh. But it's, it's still, ano, uh, looks uh, very durable. Oo. So, salamat sa cultural ano, intermission. <laughs> Okay, muli. Salamat, Secretary Liling. Salamat, Director Nina and Miss Dalia sa pagsisilbing moderators sa ating press conference. Taos pusong pasasalamat rin sa ating ina na si Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones sa ating Undersecretary and ang ating mga directors. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Muchísimas gracias. Muli maraming salamat Muchísimas sa ating mga gracias. media partners Sabiel. na nag-isa sa ating talakayan. Nais din naming pasalamatan ang mga nakasama natin sa likod ng kamera para sa matagumpay na programa ngayong araw. At syempre, maraming salamat din sa mga tumutok sa ating Facebook Live. Dito na nagwawakas ang ating programa at talakayan tungkol sa mga aksyon. At sa mga solusyon na ipatutupad para sa pagpatuloy ng edukasyon. Muli, ako si Rodolf John Rodriguez, Education Program Supervisor ng Curriculum and Learning Management Division. At ako naman po si Iris Faye D. Seniza, Project Development Officer 2. Ah, Seniza, that's Ito it. Ito ang edoaksyon. Aksyon at solusyon para sa edukasyon. Seniza is very Mindanao.